Greetings! Oh wow, yeah, a bit of a vibe going on. Uh, hello, welcome <laughs> to High Rollers going on? What? Dungeons and Dragons. Such a vibe. Um, well, I know. Such a vibe. Yeah, we've got a weird We're vibe. Today. We've got a weird vibe, vibe today. Yeah, Mark, you vibe. Vibe check. I'm vibing. vibing. <laughs> welcome, friends, to another episode of Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition here on twitch.tv forward slash yogscast and twitch.tv forward slash High Rollers d and I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Welcome. Joining me, we have... <laughs> Three Abyssal Chickens. <laughs> we have Rhiannon, uh, Trot, and Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Other side, <laughs> where we have Tom and Katie. Katie, Katie so very, <laughs> like, I do not want to wear this, but I will. Is it like, my hair into I my face? It take it off, like, take it off. For you. Screw Kim. I love it, I love Kim. it, Kim. <laughs> I love Bork. it. Are you going to keep that on the whole time? Uh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> you guys. It looks I like a helmet. It does. It, Kim, Kim, I was going to say, Kim looks like Wonder Woman or something oh like God. that. Or a Valkyrie. Oh, my fucking hair off. <laughs> oh, damn. I'm sorry, I glued it to your hair. A bit of chicken. Oh, there's a game that has a helmet a exactly like that, and I can't remember what it is. I feel like it's like Dragon Age or something. Oh, probably, yeah. yeah. It feels very Dragon Age, very themed. Yeah. Anyway. Monster Hunter. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. There it is. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome uh, on this uh, Sunday, this. Remembrance Sunday, actually, if you're here in the UK. Mm. Um, thank you all for joining us. First up, before we crack into the game, uh, tell us about this week's sponsor, Chris Trot D and D Beyond. That's right. Two sources have coincidentally crossed paths as inspiration for today's message. Firstly, the recent panic crisis of Century temporarily oh. shutting down. Ooh. And the imminent threat of her going feral, oh. drawing near, mm. which is nice. Mm. Always good to do a sponsorship with that kind of uh, existential energy crisis. Going yeah, yeah, wow. And secondly, talking of existential crisis, I know where you're going. There's an art, uh, a Warforged written article. It's quite funny about like if you're a Warforged, what does that really mean? And like, are you really human? And right. It's like he okay. rolls for like what I was I, a Terminator? Warforged becoming human. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So I thought I'd try and prepare the party. <laughs> And go. you at home for Here what could be a symptom of Sentry's deterioration. Okay. Okay. It's only an educated guess because obviously I don't know what's going to happen. So we don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure this is pretty accurate. So this is potentially what Sentry could sound like trying to say what D&D Beyond is what? and how good a tool it is being <laughs> unable to speak properly. Are you playing extremely loud? You can't hear me. What? I don't know what, what he's doing. Nice. D&D Beyond is a digital tool set for 5th edition, <laughs> allowing you to create a play character with, a interacti with an inter interactive character sheet What's that can doing? be linked together with the other players in the, in the campaign. Is it Managed hearing his own voice back? Managed by a DM. Create a character and check out the basic rules for free on dndbeyond.com. So what is this? It's a speech jammer. It's a speech jammer. Oh, so it's like trying to like send frequencies. It's sending my own voice back to me. Yeah. It's slightly offset. <laughs> I need to try this. Did I say I it right? I thought he finally just lost it. Yeah. yeah, that's I thought that I was you like, what are it? you doing? How does it, how does it, how do I, what? Tom, try it. Well, we can, <laughs> Tom. Tom. Trot listening to his own voice. This is meant to be a DD uh, live stream, but right now it's just talking to Tom. How to put these on. Other way. Well, How do I wear headphones? You had it right. Oh, you had it right. Oh. Okay. Carry on, just while I figure this out. Just All right, sure. In your ears. While Tom sorts that out, uh, thank you, D&D Beyond, as always, uh, for sponsoring us. Um, as mentioned last week, they do now have, uh, if you are That's in Italy, the uh, they now have the Player's Handbook in Italian. And coming out next week, it's Eberron. Uh, oh, yeah. Eberron is released next week. Eberron. D&D uh, Beyond and in, in gaming stores. Uh, Eberron, something of the last <laughs> war. I can't remember what it's called. Look is at he... what ear it's in. I Look at what the ear is on. Just, no, just, no, 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 no. no. Stop. I'll, no, I'll, I'll do it later. I'll do it next time. I really time. want Tom to figure it out, though. What is the name of the book? Uh, Eberron Rising from the Last War is out Ooh. next week. Um, Eberron's one of my personal favourite campaign right, settings. Yeah. Uh, it's what I did a one-shot uh, over in Luca in. Um, it's really, really cool. That's coming out. And thank you once again, D&D Beyond, for sponsoring High Rollers. We Ooh. love you, D&D Beyond. Um, thank you for sponsoring us. Yeah. Second up, some other people that we love. Idol Champions of yeah. Forgotten Realms. Yes, we do. Um, really lovely guys. The, the team over at Codename so Entertainment. Really lovely. Uh, just to mention, Sentry is now available in Idol Champions. Yeah. Yeah. With Ayla yeah. and Quill. Um, she's a brand new tank support yeah. character, isn't she? Yeah, best character in the game. Currently the Eroes Welcome Weekend. It is yeah. indeed the Eroes Welcome Weekend. Yeah. There are lowland chests. Cake. Huh? 
can get a quilt. You can get a gold shiny quilt cape and you can buy Lowland chest, which I was quite, I didn't know that they were doing that, which yeah. is quite cool. And also um, if you've unlocked all of Ayla, Quill and Sentry, they work better as a team. Yeah. Yes, your heroes of Earth. Oh, very, very heroes cool. Synergy. Unlike the campaign. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, but no, Agreed. so that's really cool. You've been posting up some really cool little lore bits from yeah. Century on Twitter as well, Rihanna. Right. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so really cool. setting that bar real high for us too. <laughs> and then thanks, Ray. I just like maybe making people cry. <laughs> yeah, she exactly. says and then laughs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no nice. pressure when you and me come out. Like, yeah. Lucius has a red gem. Lucius has a green gem. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> he likes gems. He likes His five <laughs> items are just different coloured gems, fuck's sake. He quite likes gems. <laughs> I quite like green. Uh, so yeah, so go and check that out. Idol Champions is free to play, um, yeah. and you can pick up Century with the event going on right now. Mm. Thank you guys. Um, really cool. and a couple of quick things. Don't forget, if you go over to twitch.tv forward slash High Rollers D and D, you can sub up and get High Rollers specific emotes. You can also join in the chat there if you prefer. It's a bit more of a kind of like community game focused chat, and Yogg's Cast is just a big old mess of <laughs> stuff. <laughs> um, okay. Wow. wow. So the chat is like. On Yogscast, it's more more freeform, hmm. and then on High Rollers, it's a bit wow. more focused. Yeah, yeah. Also, I heard you get three more pixels. Yeah, on High Rollers D and D than compared to the Yogscast. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, they're in the corners. Sid said, "Can confirm." Can confirm. Sh sure, uh, but there's emotes. Out extra pixels. <laughs> Don't forget to use your Amazon Prime. You can get Twitch Prime, uh, and you can sub up for free. Um, fan art. If you do make art, if you'd like to make yeah. art, please do send it to us. Either tweet it to us and send it to the email. Which is highrollersdnd at gmail.com. Thanks, Rhiannon. Um, send that over. We love fan art. It's the we best. Did, yeah. uh, we've not had to, we've not had enough to make a video for a little while. Um, but if you'd like to make some, send it our way. Um, some really I'd like. I want to do a fan art competition at some point soon as well. Like yeah, I want to try and do cool. that next. Time. That email is also the perfect place to send fan music as well. Yeah. In which case, thank you to Matsy for stupid spooky Starbane that was playing before <laughs> the uh, start of this episode. Like spooky skeletons. Very spooky. <laughs> it's not. It's not comedy spooky. It's oh, okay. genuine spooky. Genuine spooky. It's real spooky. creepy. Super cool. Nice. We're actually really close to having enough fan art for a new video. So you send Jules in. And we'll be able to batch them together and send them out. Yeah. Mm. And also just, it makes us really happy when we get that up. Yeah. Um, and then the last one is, in a couple of weeks, it will be the beginnings of the Yogscast Jingle Jam, oh which God, is a big charity so stream. Yeah. So get ready. Um, we don't know exactly what our plans are going to be, but the way we normally do it is uh, it will be non-canon episodes. So basically, after November, there won't be any canon episodes until January. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, but we'll, be, we'll find something fun to do. It will be some fun one-shots, some fun evenings of board games birthday or something. For charity. Kim's got wow. a birthday stream. It's all for charity. Uh, you get a humble bundle full of cool games. Speaking of birthdays, we'll celebrate mine next week. Next yeah. week. Because wow. it kind of falls, falls in, the in the weird middle. middle. Yeah. So we're going to do it next week. Um, and with that... Time for Dun Dun? Dun Dun? Dun Dun! Dun Dun! Dun Dun! Dun Dun! Dun Dun! Dun Dun! Dun away! Dun Dun! Bam. Welcome back to High Rollers D and D. Last time, the party, having recovered from the events aboard the Astral Citadel Aegis V, began their journey towards the City of Glass aboard their airship, the Storm Chaser. Nova, currently situated in the medical chamber or quarters, I guess, of the airship, continues to heal. However, her arm deteriorates and displays magical after effects that necrotize life or anything living that she touches. However, she does earn the respect of Helios, the Eterna, who bound themselves to Sentry and the crew. When alone, Nova takes some time to use the ILS, a portable illusory device with the programmed mind of Callus Starbane himself. 
Quill, Sentry, and Lucius spend time performing their duties above the Storm Chaser. As Nova recovers, uh, uh, Sentry and Lucius decide to get to know the crew a little better during this time. Lucius, hoping to earn the respect of the Wolf Pack, begins drinking and carousing with them in the evenings away from the rest of the team. One night, he overindulges to a heavy degree and wakes up with no memory of the night before. A new ring of woven rope on his finger and a Beast Walker woman called Faith curled up by his side. Sentry befriends Howard, the halfling cook. <laughs> Sentry befriends Howard, the halfling cook, and after spending time getting to know him, discovers that there is a little bit more to the halfling's uh, tale than it first seemed, and a tragic history of a lover and a son left abandoned. Uh, the party passed the island of Corsari off the northwest coast of Suvona. The crew became immediately alarmed as an approaching dragon carrying dragonborn soldiers approached the storm chaser. The dragon arriving, calling himself Amadrasos, an emissary and official for the Draconis Militarum. He forcefully inspects the airship, discovers the Starbane uniform in Lucius's quarters, and outraged demands to know what's going on. The party does manage to convince the dragon that they are enemies of Starbane and reveal the events aboard the Aegis V, as well as the events that took place beneath Bright Flame Abbey with Callus and Valor. Amadrasos politely requests that the party divert to the city below to give information to the military there and to discuss potential next steps. And the ship begins its descent down towards the city. Um, Vivek City um, is a settlement that has sprung up around the enormous, enormous gold crystal warship that is called the Vivex itself. Um, the ship is buried halfway into an arid desert-ish land. It's not quite sand. Um, it's more of like a, a badlands or like a wasteland, kind of like thick cracked mud, um, heavy rocky terrain, dry scrubland. Um, and the ship itself is kind of half submerged into the ground. Around it, a city has been built. There are settlements made from stone and wood um, scattered all over in quite a large area. It's a very dense city, there's quite a heavy population here, but the Draconis Militarum, the Dragonborn military, is everywhere, uh, with patrols and guards keeping a watch um, on things as they go. There are not a lot of them, they are just very disciplined in their patrols. Um, you can see that for all the citizens you can see around you, there aren't that many guards, um, there aren't that many soldiers, they are just very consistent and are not slacking off. They are very vigilant in their activities. I believe that you were actually taken down into the city um, and you were being led by Amadrasos in his humanoid form, a very tall, uh, bronze-skinned individual with kind of brassy, coppery hair um, spilling down his back, um, very, very well-kept robes, heavy jewellery, um, as he leads you onto the deck of the ship itself. Um, Along the way, you have seen that there are merchants and citizens from Suvona. You see dwarves from Gold Throne. You see tieflings, um, a kind of nomadic people that kind of travel around the lowlands with goods to sell, as well as their ASMR bodyguards who travel with them. Um, there are also others. There are humans, half elves, and dwarves from. They look similar to the Suvonans that you've seen before, but they seem a bit more dour. Their clothing dyed heavily crimson or red. Um, they all have like very thick, dark hair, kind of grown long. Um, and they eye you not suspiciously, but a little bit more sourly than the others uh, do. Uh, you are taken aboard the ship um, and led uh, onto its main deck, this huge, sprawling crystal deck that covers a large part of the city. There are strange arcane devices. There are these kind of, they almost look like cannons, but they seem to be made out of the same black crystal um, that are locked into place on the sides of the ship itself. There is no mast that you can see. Uh, it's just like an open parade ground on the top deck. And yeah, you see the occasional dragonborn soldiers, all different colors of dragonborn, um, but you don't see any more dragons. Amadrasos is the only dragon you've seen so far. Um, uh, any questions at this point or anything that anybody would like to ask or say or do? I know Ayla, you're probably a little bit out of it, so if you've got any I'll questions about stuff. I think it's easier for me to just catch up while okay. things happen. So. Okay. <clears throat> yes, um, Amadrasos, he turned into a dragon, didn't he? So is it, I what guess it's not immediately obvious. What colour dragon is he? Uh, a copper, I think I made him. But I guess like, 
Is he? Is it immediately obvious that he is a dragon that can turn into? No, I think that now that you see the form, it's not. If you had just met him in the humanoid form, you're not sure if you would have recognized him as a dragon. Okay. But looking now, he's definitely very tall. Um, probably closer to sort of like, like high six foot, maybe even seven foot. So he's very tall. Um, his skin is almost perfect. Like there's no uh, issues with complexion. There's no deformities. He looks incredible. He looks like this beautiful seven foot tall humanoid man with long hair. Um, okay. And he's wearing, you know, robes. Almost looks like a mage or maybe a priest, but covered in jewelry. Um, and everybody, the soldiers snap to attention. All these dragonborn kind of snap into attention when he passes. Um, and he's given a, a wide berth by many of the soldiers around. Okay. Dreamy. Once again, Nova has found a new new person <laughs> to lord over. It's like opposite of Starbin. Yeah. There is an element to him, yeah. There's definitely an element which is similar to Starbane. Very powerful, mm. tall humanoid. Starbane dragon confirmed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Amadrasos uh, speaks, he, hold, he holds out a hand to stop you. He doesn't actually speak to you. Um, he just kind of holds out a hand indicating he wishes you to stop where you are. Um, and then turns and walks over to a series of guards who are in front of... I mean, to you it just looks like a plain crystal wall. Um, you can see maybe a very faint at, uh, edge of a doorway, uh, but it just looks like this golden crystal. And I believe I described that um, Sentry and Nova, you can sense that there is a living presence within the ship itself. Um, you can almost hear this kind of breathing, um, this deep resonant breathing from within the, the crystal and the ship itself. The layout and the design of the ship compared to the kind of Starbane ship that we've seen before. I mean, the ship that you were on before, you didn't really see it from the outside. You kind of tunneled your way into its interior. Um, it felt very large when you were inside. This seems enormous. I mean, to make it clear, the, we're talking like an aircraft carrier in modern, like, you know, if you want to picture a modern yeah. kind of size. Yeah. So this thing is huge, the cool. ship. I've seen um, tons of aircraft carriers up close as well, so it's a great size reference. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like they are. Ah, yes, yes, I know exactly. You've seen them in film. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Avengers. sarcastic boy. You've seen <laughs> a helicarrier is an almost perfect example. Oh, for no. like, uh, the helicarrier. Right. <laughs> Another thing I've seen in real life. Shut up. <laughs> to get a sense of scale, so you know that, like, oh. clearly. <laughs> I just had a sweet thrown at my neck. Yeah, for podcast listeners, <laughs> it just, just made a hilarious sound. <laughs> oh we made like, um, like a like. That was a real smack. You don't it? need a for podcast listeners. They definitely heard that slap. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a slap. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it's more to give you the sense that there are this this thing is huge. It dominates the space that it takes up, and clearly, could people could be living inside of it, and they can mm -hmm. function from it. Um, Check position on your mic, Kim, because it's a bit quiet. You might have it a bit low, or like that it's flipped around. <clears throat> um, and yeah, uh, so Amadrasos goes over, he speaks with a couple of guards, and then returns and gestures for you to follow. Um, and then when, if you do so, and as you approach the doors, they almost just slide open. Like the crystal just kind of begins to almost twist and particle and shift, um, kind of oh. and forms and parts way like a curtain being parted mm. for you. Um, and you are led inside. The Dragonborn soldiers, one man, woman, woman, kind of look at you strangely, but you know, not disturbed. They kind of more curiously, like why are these why are these people being let inside, kind of thing. And you are led down into a uh, a large section at the rear of the ship. Um, Amadrasos turns and he kind of mentions to you. It's like, this is the command deck of the ship. Normally, we do not permit non-dragons or draconis militarum personnel to enter, but I think that it is best um, you speak with the Brigadier General. Uh, I also need to inquire as to the status of the General, the, the Commander General themselves. Um, come with me. Um, he kind of gestures. And you are taken through very tight corridors. These are quite tight, narrow, crystalline corridors. Um, you can see that this kind of vein of crystal that you've seen on the Starbane ships exists, but where that was filled with like a purple light, this is filled with a golden light. 
um, and you are taken down. Uh, you kind of lose a sense of direction as the corridors become very twisty and narrow and you kind of take multiple routes around. Um, those of you, I think Ayla and Sentry, those of you with a more military mind, it's clearly designed that if people were to get on this ship, if you didn't know where you were going, you could easily get, become lost and you know, be outflanked by people that do know their way around. Like there's lots of little avenues where people can kind of get around and behind you. Um, it's a very defensible kind of layout uh, cool. for the ship itself. But you were eventually led down um, into what you think might be like a hull, like the bottom of this great ship um, and into a very large, very extravagant uh, armory. You can see that the walls are lined with these uh, thick metal cases, like chests, um, which contain very strange looking gear, some of it made from crystal, some of it made from uh, metal, some of it has glowing arcane sigils on it. Um, and you can see that there are there is a large table, like a council table, um, and there are several dragonborn and what you think might be another dragon in human form. Um, this one is a, a woman, um, silver, uh, kind of almost like pale moonlight skin, silvery hair falling down but extremely athletically built. Where Amadrasos is thin and lithe and very elegant, this woman has, you know, biceps, and you can see that she has a broad shoulders, a warrior's physique, um, as she kind of speaks with the others. Uh, Amadrasos gestures to a, a number of chairs and suggests that you take a seat temporarily. So wait, how many other people are in here, sorry? There are, I can tell you, there is exactly uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, not including Amadrasos, so six now. So all cool. uh, Dragonborn? Uh, four Dragonborn and what appears to be potentially another female dragon. Right, okay. Nice. Um, I'd like to know how many dragons are in the room, you know. Yeah. <laughs> two, <laughs> At any two one dragons. Time. At any one time. Four dragons. Like how many dragons in this dungeon? Um, Amadrasos bows deeply before the rest of them um, and they all kind of turn to him. Um, and the, the silver dragon woman uh, is custodian. What are you doing here? We had reports that there was uh, an unauthorized flyover by a, a vessel. Yes, that is correct, Major. I have brought the individuals in question here. Uh, they have information regarding Callus. Uh, they have already apprised me of several details. I wanted to know if the General is awake yet. Um, and you see the other dragons and the Dragonborn kind of shift. Uh, one of the Dragonborn um, a gold dragonborn actually, uh, kind of like snaps to attention. I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to tell you, custodian, that the, gen uh, the commander general is... <sighs> Awakening him is proving difficult. He is slipping in and out of slumber. Rousing him fully is proving problematic. It's getting worse. Ah, uh, I see. We've also been having reports of uh, some of our scouts going missing. That was what we were just discussing. Um, we shouldn't continue this conversation while we have non-authorized personnel in the room. Very well. Uh, he kind of turns. Allow me to make introductions. And he kind of gestures to you all to come up. Uh, he gestures to the silver dragon woman uh, beside him. Major Yaksa, uh, another one of my kind. And, uh, here we have, and he points to the, th uh, the four dragonborn. Brigadier General Kavax, Colonel Ulmak, Colonel Garvis, and Lieutenant Colonel Lasavex. We are some of the more higher ranking officials here on the Vivex. Your names, repeat them. I've forgotten them already. I'll uh, step forward and bow, because okay. I'm kind of used to this sort of formality. There's a, there's a heavy formality here, and I think that... I feel a little bit more comfortable. You, I think for Lucius, this is... It's different to how people treat the Sky Prince um, in Gusthaven, but you've seen this kind of attitude with his generals and when there is a kind of war, you know, any kind of like military meeting. Essentially, you'd be very familiar with this. This is a war council. This is, these are elite officers who are discussing military tactics. Um, you can see that the table has maps of the area. It has maps of Erois, um, and they were very clearly in some sort of very important conversation when you came in. So you'd bow deeply. Uh, humbled to meet your acquaintance. Thank you for the entry. Uh, I am the captain of the storm chaser that uh, passed unauthorized across your lands. And uh, my name is Lucius Virian Elowin Elenasto, hail from Gust Haven. They kind of look over you, and the dragonborns um, look over and they're like, 
We are familiar with Gusthaven, uh, Lord Elanesto. Um, we do much uh, great business with them. Thank you for your uh, courteous welcome, um, your courteous greeting. And the rest of you? Uh, uh, Ayla, hi. Ayla. Nice to meet you all. Like, there's kind of an uncomfortable kind of shuffling as they're... Sorry, I don't do as good as he does. It's more that we are not used to casual uh, travellers entering our war chamber. I'm just with him. I, I don't know. I'm just with them. Mm. So I'm they not kind of, used to the fancy ones. You see one of the Dragonborn whisper like, bodyguard. And like the, the <laughs> other one like nods. I can um, take that as well. <laughs> Uh, I am Kila Kadkalar. I'm a messenger from uh, the Stormwall. I am uh, part of the a crew member of the Storm Chaser. The we are familiar with the Messenger Guild. Uh, <laughs> Quartermaster Captain, Quill. Quartermaster. Captain. Captain. Thank you. Uh, Captain. Qu quart what? He's a he's quartermaster of the Storm yes. Chaser. Quartermaster. We are familiar with the Messenger Guild. We have one of your towers here in the city. Oh. Ooh. Interesting. <laughs> they nod round. Ooh. <laughs> oh, uh, me. Uh, hi. And I kind of wave with my gauntleted hand. <laughs> this kind of like very stiff metal hand. And then sort of hide it again because I'm still a bit ashamed of it. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a chief engineer. Uh, engineer? Am I chief engineer? Chief engineer Nova Viger. They just nod. Please, yeah. please to meet your acquaintance. They just hold out a hand for the bowing. They just nod. Um, and then they look They look towards Century and they're like, Guardian? Dragonborns? There is an, uh, a familiarity and they kind of greet you all with like a kind of like, they, they salute you in a kind of military salute. Yeah, I do um, like a military like Solvin salute okay. to these guys. <clears throat> Glad to be in your acquaintance. What was your designation, Guardian? I was a protector of the kingdom of Solvin. They all meant your name. Oh, Sentry. <laughs> Hi. Major. What is a Guardian Sentry? Solvin Salute. I've been sort of thinking right about it. It's, I think it'd be like, because it has like hands. three pillars, it'd be like three hands, maybe like on the chest, three on the head. Fingers. Oh, three like fingers. Like three fingers. Shoulder, then shoulder four head, chest. Like, okay. 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 Nice. nice. Cool. It was just I noticed you did a motion when you said that, and I was just wondering what it was. I've been trying to. I've had I was a lot hoping of she'd come up with something really funny because she was put on the spot there, and she actually came up with something else in the yeah. yeah, that was Damn actually it. legit. Rhiannon's, <laughs> Rhiannon's, <laughs> Rhiannon's been doing a lot of work in detailing right. out Century, and I am a very happy DM for it. I've had a lot of free time. <laughs> 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 um, the Dragonborn will kind of like nod um, and uh, you see Amadras will speak to, you can see that kind of on the edges of the room, you hadn't really noticed what you, them when you came in, there are other Dragonborn here, but they are not in uniform, they are not in armour, they are wearing very simple clothes um, and they appear to be maybe staff or like, you know, people that like do other non-military jobs. Um, Amadras just waves to them and they vanish for a, a period. Um, Amadrasos turns, before we go any further, there is some things that you should know, and then some things that we will need to discuss with my companions here and the, my fellow officers. The first is, ultimately, the Vivex cannot make any strong actions until the Commander General is awake. You will need to speak with the Commander General himself, and you will need to be very convincing in what you say. Older dragons, specifically our most ancient and wise dragons. The cradle that was created by Siaska, it, it makes us, dragons that is, it makes us tired, lethargic. The older we get, the harder it is for them to be awake for long periods of time. This means that when we must rouse our officers, it, is, it can take some time. Brigadier General, how long do you suspect before the general is awake? Uh, it is hard to say, custodian. I suspect we may be looking at perhaps a day or two before we can fully rouse him. Uh, I see. Until then, you will of course be guests of the military, of myself in particular. I will arrange to have rooms at a, a suitable inn within the city, um, and you will have a, a guard provided uh, to make sure that you are unaccosted. <laughs> But you will need to come and speak with the general. There is no doubt around that. You have flown into our airspace illegally. Normally, the procedure would be to arrest you, to investigate your ship, your destination, where you have come from. This would take weeks, perhaps. 
Instead, we will waive those rights in favor of the information you have provided and providing that you speak with the general directly. Is this clear and understood? Two days instead of two weeks. Sounds like a good deal. Yeah. I also believe I agreed to have some of our finest uh, artificers examine Sentry Guardian uh, to determine if there is any um, understanding of her condition. Okay. Much appreciated. Thank you. In return, please, in your own words, tell the others what you have told me. You spoke to me of a, this uh, Astral Citadel that you had come from, where you acquired the uniform. But you also mentioned that you have met Kalistabain directly. Yes. And there is a murmur amongst the dragons and the dragonborn, like, what? I can't, that's not possible. At least we think so, because we have now seen the potential for Starbane to manifest himself as an illusion. Please However, go on. We're, we're pretty sure that the first time we encountered Starbane in his presence was truly real. The silver dragonborn woman steps forward like, then there is no need to be subtle. We are aware that Callus has returned to Erois. Champions, uh, high priests of the gods have come and spoken with several leaders. Uh, and we have received word via the messenger guild directly. Sadly, we have been unable to awaken the general. It has taken us nearly a week to rouse him already. He still shows signs of drifting back into slumber. Until he is awakened, there's not much we can do. A meeting has been called amongst the leaders of Erois. Several high prominent figures of the Sky Cities and of the Lowland Realms will be meeting together to discuss this threat. We have been gathering what information we can, but we have been having our own problems here in Corsari. Whatever information you have, if you have indeed met with Callus, mm. we need to know everything. Amadrasos says, there is one more thing. Captain Lucius, I know you were panicked at the time, but you mentioned something of great importance. There was a girl who traveled with you. Vala, I believe you called her. Yes. You said that Starbane claimed she was his daughter. I did. Did I? You, I did. You said that you told them everything. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You went on a full word In excruciating detail. Did. This is perhaps a blessing in disguise. You knew this girl. You traveled <laughs> with her, you told me. We had a very strong bond with this girl. And perhaps there is a way that if we can find a way for you to contact her, to communicate with her, she could give us information on what Callus is attempting here on the Rose. I think, yes, as a matter of urgency, before whatever Callus is attempting, she, she might be manipulated or, or worse. Then perhaps, does she perhaps pose? This is one of the, one of the Dragonborn officers, a kind of much older brass Dragonborn. You can see he's kind of got his frills around his ears are drooping. He looks very old and withered. Perhaps then that there is a chance that this girl could turn against Erois. Yes, um, she's very young. However, I think her conscience was clear at the time that we knew her. She had her motives and she was very against Starbane. Mm. It's probably well within her power, but not within her conscience, no, to turn against us. So you say, but you do not know what has happened since she has rejoined with her supposed father. But as you say, if this is a, a crucial piece of hope, I think we should try it. I agree. If there is an opportunity for us to get information from this girl, we need it. That will be our greatest asset in this coming conflict. Callus is wise and powerful, and he has a great empire behind him. Up until now, the cradle has been our only defense. We have seen no signs that he is attempting to attack from the astral space beyond, which means that whatever he is planning, he is using whatever forces he has already brought to Erois. This is good. Perhaps means that he cannot bring the might of his full empire. We may still have a chance. You mentioned that there was a portal beneath this abbey. 
Two portals. Two portals. The first one is when we saw Starbeam. Yes. And the other? The other one was underwater, yes. Yes, you mentioned the astral. The Hagen were being corrupted. But you believe that to be depowered? Yes, we destroyed the citadel with which the other portal was attached to it. It was, um, it was being powered by a corrupted Eterna. We destroyed the Eterna and the station lost its power. Mm. Mm. The Sahagan that attacked the Tritons, you said that they were being driven by forces of Starbane? Uh, yes, in a way. I think that they were also being experimented on mm. and corrupted. Well, they were experimenting on villages mm. yeah tritons yes and they were bloated um they were wearing versions. symbols of zarkira well you, when you mention the symbols of zarkira the one of the dragonborn is like kind of slaps the table like i knew it i knew that the the, the naga and the stone giants were in were work were being driven by this if, if i could interject i wonder if zarkira was actually there because remember the eladrin um, so Shansara, she was posing as Zarkira, right? So I don't know if it actually was Zarkira or just one of... Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Uh, it could have been a manipulative effort to get the Sahagan to do their bidding. Mm. And so, Sorry. yes, yeah. We think that this may be a tactic that Callus is using across Erois. Hmm. If he can conjure up little images of himself, maybe he can do it for other people. Indeed. We have been dealing on Corsadi for the last several hundred years. We, the Vivex, the Draconis Militarum, have been fending off attacks from creatures known as Naga and stone giants. They live in the deserts, in the ravines, in the stones and the mountains here on this island. They are remnants of Starbane's forces, descendants uh, of them at least. Zarkira once commanded units of Medusa, uh, creatures that can turn people to stone with a gaze. We believe that the Naga are the descendants of those Medusa from hundreds of years ago. They've proven very tricky for us to fight, but in recent, perhaps over the last month or so, their attacks have grown more bold. They have grown in numbers. They have attracted a cult of humanoid worshippers from both Gold Throne and Blood Veil, the two continents, uh, the two civilizations nearby. They have grown in number and their attacks are swelling. We have sent several of our scouts to try and locate where they may be operating, but none have returned. What is the name of the cult? They simply refer to themselves as, as the, the, the daughters of Zarkira. Oh, we met some of those. The stone giants appear to be... We're not sure if they are necessarily... We believe them to be native to Erois, but have been perhaps um, manipulated or uh, are working for the Naga. Uh, we are unsure of the details, but they are powerful. Sadly, most of our legions have been sent overseas. One of the ways that we maintain the city is we hire out our legions to other nations and kingdoms for as mercenaries, private military. This means that our numbers have been depleted here. We've been unable to strike back at them. But I believe that if this is happening here, if it is happening with the Tritons, it is likely it is happening elsewhere. Have you encountered any other uprisings, organizations maybe, that are trying to upset the balance of things in Aroas? Um, Plenty. On Gusthaven, yes? Yeah. yeah. On Gusthaven? Mm. Please, tell me. Yes, I will. <laughs> wow! Don't <laughs> look at Kim's notes. Those are Kim's notes. That's Nova's <laughs> memory. They were called the wheelbarrows. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the wind. Wind barrows. The wind barrows. Yeah. Yeah. Quilt can just say, like... <laughs> Wind, wind, barons. Wind, wind, barons. wind barons. Wind barons. Wind barons. Wind barons. Yes, and they were. We, we stumbled across Gust Haven, barons. me returning home, barons. and they were already attacking Gust Haven, and there was a corruption going on. The Sky Prince was trying to deal with it, and it got right up into the council. I believe that there have been reports of uh, airships outside of our space being attacked by pirates, uh, Gustodian. 
Hmm. Any more? Are you aware of anything else that may be connected? So when we first encountered Starbane, a cult was growing there. However, we don't know if that's connected to Starbane. They were trying to connect the portal to some other location. Demon. Yeah. Um, Whether that was a trick as well, however, now considering the Sahagan threat, Kalos does command uh, uh, devils and de demons wait, in his army. It all makes sense. Does it? Yes. That was all misdirection as well. They thought that they were going to a demon portal, providing them information and tools, and wanted to connect with their demon lord. Oh, but we turns out it was Kalos Starbe. We did see the. No, demon they did lord. summon the demon. Don't no, they did that bit. The oh, no, they did. Yes. Yeah. Caradus, the Ashbringer. It's been a long journey. That's Caradus, you say. Yes. Name rings a bell. The cult there was called the Ashbringers. It was an uprising. Brigadier General just kind of, uh, the Brigadier kind of steps in and is like, I will make a, note, make a note of this, Major and Custodian. It is something to be investigated. There may have been, I think we may have had reports of a cult of this nature growing in Blood Vale as well. I will make sure we check in with our intelligence departments. Uh, there was the girls in the Ironwood as well. Yeah. yeah. Under the shop. Well, they, they said they were part of the, 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 the Zarkira, Daughters of Zarkira yeah. thing. Also, goblins and Voxar. They had uh, Starbane powered weaponry, but that could have been from Scavenge 10 years ago. They were crazed goblins. Yes. They weren't. I think they were remnants anyway, so, like. Yeah. They'd been close to the Stormwall for some time. Also, the silver, the, the dragon woman, woman kind of, uh, the dragon, the silver dragon lady, um, who kind of. <laughs> she looks more elvish, like in a humanoid form. Um, and you can see that she's only really probably in this humanoid form because she's amongst other humanoid creatures. Um, but she kind of like stretches herself up and she's like, you have clearly fought against the forces of Starbane on a regular basis. Yes? Yes, we seem to be drawn towards it. <laughs> and you are perhaps the only ones we know of that have encountered Callus and yet, yet lived. Whatever this connection you have. Just a note on that, now that we're talking about Valor. We only lived because she told him not to kill us. So she does so. have sway over her father then. We yes. might, well she did. Who knows yeah. now, she's yeah. been with him. But we did have that little, little bond thing yeah. saved us once. She's always been strong of heart and she was quick to realize that whatever she was with before us was wrong and that she didn't want to be a part of it. She had her own determination. Yeah. Which leads me to believe that she's still strong of heart now. We will make no decisions regarding this young girl's life now. That is, um, that is a problem to address later. In the nature of war, which is what this will become, we must deal with our priorities first. Firstly, my thanks. For not only giving us this information, but for everything you have achieved thus far. Fighting against an enemy as powerful as Callus is no easy feat. I must ask you, keep this information to yourselves. This must remain between us and you for now. Finally, <laughs> someone can actually talk to about it. Of course. <laughs> I would also request, I will give you the location of the meeting that will be taking place amongst the leaders of Aroes. It is not for some time, about a month or so from now, as people make their own preparations. I ask you to be there. You have information that is relevant to this conflict, but also, it is rare to have fighters of such skill who are willing to go about this not for gold or for glory, but because it is right. I ask that you be there. Will uh, the other champions be there? Champions? The champions of the gods. Uh, perhaps so. I cannot say. I'm not, uh, I'm not a follower of your gods. We have our own here in the Dragonborn Society, the oh. great star worm. But... Amongst the city, there are there is a temple in the uh, in the uh, Hope's Gold uh, commune. Temples to your uh, Velena, I believe, and um, another one I cannot remember. Okay, but perhaps I know that there will be leaders from across all of Aroes, uh, the great cities, uh, kings, queens, dukes, councils, republics. Do you know? that they're all trustworthy. That is my next point. We are the Draconis Militarum. We are incorruptible. We came to this planet 
because we knew what he was doing. Because we wished to warn Siaska of what was to come. What? Uh, sorry, I don't mean to inter interrupt. What do you mean by incorruptible? We are here for one purpose, to defend Erois against Callus. Right. You may forgive me for perhaps, uh, I do not wish to insult you as individuals, but many of your kinds, elves, humans, dwarves, they are prone to greed, to ambition. Callus thrives on these things. Callus uses these as tools. He used it against our own people, against our own dragons, to sway them to his side. I do not trust everybody that will attend this meeting, but I do trust you. We're on the same page there then, because uh, turns Rock out stoned. we've had quite a few untrustworthy people that we've met just in, in, our, in general travels that we don't really want to, so this is why we're asking who's trustworthy. And I think it's best that we stay on our guard. I don't think everyone at that meeting can be trusted. You are wise. It is the nature of those who have not suffered to, to crave. I'm, I'm curious of the incorruptible part because a large part of your dragonborn society <laughs> was corrupted by Callus, was it not? We are the descendants of those who rejected those ideas. We are the descendants of the warriors who gave up everything to come and protect a planet that was not our own. And I do not disrespect that fact, but I feel under Callus's mass superiority in terms of arms, anyone is corruptible and we should always be aware of that fact. The, the dragon seems completely unfazed and is like, for your people that is true, but for ours, our will is iron. It cannot be broken. I do hope so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you get the sense that you are skirting very icy ground and that you're bordering on insulting them. Good. <laughs> All of was, them. I was about to say something that <laughs> probably wouldn't have like, you, There is just this point where like, you can sense this tension in the room and the dragonborn are all looking at Lucius. Almost like this, like, go on, say something else. Like, <laughs> we'll, we'll show you how incorruptible we are. Like, because th there is a pride here. I don't think I'm gonna, you know, Will, uh, Quill, you have a decent, like, insight, like, passive insight, I think. You can immediately tell that there's two things at work here. The dragons themselves are arrogant. They, they just see themselves as we are the protectors, they're the heroes. They're the ones who are going to save everything. Sacrificed everything. Yeah, they, they, there's arrogance there. With the Dragonborn, it is pride. They are proud of what they do to perhaps a point that could be flawed or exploited. They are militaristic. They think that they cannot be beaten. They think that they can't be corrupted. And I think all of you know that that's pretty much the fastest way for stuff like that to happen. Um, mm. So there is definitely, there's a sense of that in the room. Um, you, you believe them when they say that they can be trusted, that they want to stop Callus. I don't think any, you don't see anything which would indicate that these guys are like Brookstone, that these guys are going to betray you. But they have, there is a flaw here <laughs> that you can see. Blinded by pride. Yeah. Hmm. And arrogance. Forgive us. We've just had many, many instances with... Betrayal. Betrayal yeah. across all races. And we've personally not met you before, and uh, you we've gotten the into the habit of being overly cautious. Understand. Shall we say? And in a lot of cases, underly cautious. Understandable. Due but to previous cases of undercaution. You need not fear. You are now amongst people that will protect you. We can help you. Um, and perhaps in return, you can help us. As I mentioned, the general will. We will try and awaken the general as quickly as possible, but. If we rush it, the general's mood will be unpleasant for those he sees. Um, can, can, I, can I just ask about that? Of course. Um, when, when, I don't know if you felt this, Sentry, when we, when we entered this um, vessel, I can feel a presence here. I can feel something sleeping. Yeah, mm. I felt that too. But I can only feel that because of Eterna, right? So is the, well, he's not an Eterna, but he's mm. a dragon. Yes. What's the bond there? You are. The general is who you sense. And she kind of like smiles very warmly. 
The creature you sense is Velavixis, one of the greatest of our kind. A gold, an ancient gold dragon. When, when we decided to rise up against Callus on our home world, there were 10 dragons in total that gave their lives. You understand the power of Eterna. From what I encounter, and judging by your raiment around your neck, you carry one with you. The Eterna are power. They are magical power. So are dragons, in a different way. But ma dragons are magical beings, powerful beyond that of many others. And these ancient dragons, when we left our home world, we could not power the ships without an Eterna. And Callus had all of the Eterna to himself. So the dragons gave themselves up, their bodies, their minds, their spirits. They infused them into the ships so they could fly, so they could transcend the astral space. Wow. That is who you sense. The Eterna and the dragons are brothers, perhaps is not the right word, perhaps distant relatives, mm. born from the same cosmic energy that all magic comes from. That is why you can sense them. Wow. That is why your guardian can sense them. It's not through the Eterna you wear, but through your own, and she points to the Matrix, your own bond, that you can sense other magical beings as powerful as Vexus. Oh, wow. Well, it's very nice to be alongside Dragonborn again. It's Indeed. The circumstances, I understand, are tragic, but it brings comfort knowing that, once again, I'm fighting alongside Dragonborn and like against the, One of the Dragonborn kind of, like, slaps a hand on your shoulder and is like, it's been far too long since we've fought alongside your kind. Ah, I remember the stories of my ancestors, rows of guardians gleaming in the sunlight, standing before hordes of Starbane soldiers. <laughs> Yeah, as a being from a fallen kingdom, it'll be a shame for something like that to happen again, so... Yes. Let's prevent that from happening a second time. We will. We will. Yes. Wait, what do you know about the Matrix? Centuries Matrix? Not much, I'm afraid. Our artificers, uh, we analyse Magitech. The dragons did not have technology of Callus's level, but when we fled Draconis, we stole much of it that was aboard his ships. Over the centuries, we have reversed-engineered much of it to learn how it works. The Guardians, however, are still something of a mystery to us. We understand a little of how their matrix works, but we would not be able to replicate it or re-energize it. But we know perhaps a little more than your kind, uh, having lost much of that information. Uh, no, it's just you alluded to similarities between the Matrix and uh, the Eterna themselves. I was just wondering. Well, because the Matrix is born from magic. Same cosmic magic that the Eterna are created from or made of. Okay. Any, the only way that a creature or people like Gaia Century can be given sentience is through an immense level of magical power. More than your spells or your wands or enchantments can normally carry. Hmm. Whatever process was used to create a guardian, it was not likely from anybody on Neroeus, but from something far more old, far more ancient. Mine is now slightly different than the one I was originally given. Really? Uh, back in Kaylee's rest, I fell, and during mm. the encounter with Starbane, uh, he, in exchange for valor, he gifted us the power of a star to bring me back. The mm. star in my matrix is one that Callus gave us. In that case, we should most certainly have our artificers analyze you. For all we know, perhaps you are unaware, of course, but perhaps transmitting information, maybe using you to spy on you and your friends. That'll bring me comfort. Of course. Come with me. I will take you myself, Guardian. I am, I am Colonel Ulmac. Ulmac. And this is the older kind of brass dragonborn with his droopy frills and his kind of... One of his eyes looks like he's kind of got like cloudy cataracts or something in it. Um, and he, you can see that he's probably well past his prime, but he is not giving this position up for anything <laughs> in the world. And he's like, he's like, you know, like hobbles. Not hobbles, he still is, you know, able-bodied, but he definitely walks a bit creakier and a bit slower. And I will escort you to the artifices. You may follow us if the rest of you wish. We will send word uh, once the general is awakened. 
if you have, if you would take an old Dragonborn's advice, any help you can provide Vivek City would reflect well on you in the general's eyes. Indeed. Yes, Nova Vija. Uh, can I just share uh, one thing with you? Um, of course. Yeah. Uh, will these help? And I pull out, so the Zarkira uh, tablet that I took from the Necromancer mm -hmm. and the Aegis V schematics mm -hmm. that I took from, and I was like, I, I don't know if these will help. Uh, I took one from the Sahorgan they were experimenting on, and mm. this other one comes from the Astral Citadel. Any information on Callus, whether it is his old war machines or information you've gathered, will all be useful. We, I will have our artificers uh, examine these. Let us know what they can, what information they may wield. And they just, they, and Andras just, just takes them, <laughs> <laughs> just puts them in a bag. Oh. Uh, you can, you, you, things like being polite don't really seem to come to mind. Like, he doesn't see it as your thing you're giving him. He sees it as this is a thing I'm taking, like, this is the thing that we need, so it's mine yeah. now. Yeah. Like, there's, like, just no concept of, like, you owning things. He's like, no, you're holding things that, that are mine. That are now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And can we say that, well, I don't know, because I was thinking about this all week, like, I don't know if this is too retcon mm -hmm. that I made copies of them, like, during the downtime that we had. The tablet you wouldn't have been able to, because yeah. well, you don't really have that technology. The schematics, Can sure. I not just draw the runes, like, on sure. a piece of paper? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you just wouldn't be able to replicate it. Yeah, I wouldn't, not to replicate it, but just so I can have a yeah, paper yeah. copy. You had like so. a week on the ship, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely you can. Okay. Awesome. Is there anything else that we can help you with? Nope. I will make sure that you have fine accommodations in one of our wings. Oh, I have a Starbane battle map. Of course, yeah. yes. Yeah, Perhaps either. older than uh, will be useful now, but it may give us some tactical insight. Yeah, I'll just take it from you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. Um, so I guess two days. I'll update our crew. Thank you for the hospitality. Of course. Your ship will remain grounded until the general gives permission. That makes a lot of sense. Very well. Enjoy the city. Um, and you are basically, uh, well, if you, do you want to go with Sentry to the artificers, basically, uh, who are going to examine her, or do you just want to go out into the city without Sentry for now? Mm, I kind of feel like we should stay with Sentry. Sure. Oh, yes. What do you mean? You're safe. There is no war in Varsing, say. <laughs> oh, that nice. was for Tom. <laughs> nice. I don't get that. Yeah, you uh, know, a lot of people won't, but Chat and Tom will. I think we probably should go with Sentry. Um, because, okay. well, if they think there's some sort of tracking device in there. Yeah, true. Can I quickly update Oriya on sure. that we're grounded and the crew have the city? Mm -hmm. to check out. Don't yeah, I mean, they're not going to stop you going on the ship. Um, in fact, I think, like, we can probably do some jumping around here. So I think when Lucius goes to check on the ship, um, there are very heavy anchors basically attached to it. These kind of big oh, draconic off. grips basically holding the ship down. Oh, uh, the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Dragonborn will basically... It doesn't look like it's damaged it, and any damage it causes, they'll obviously repair, but it does not look like the ship can take off easily. It probably still could take off. It will just damage the ship to do it. Um, the crew... That's a challenge, that is. <laughs> uh, when you get there, there is... Um, you can see the crew are somewhat distressed, but they are, they're not on the ship. They're, they're going to come off the ship. There's no point in them staying on the ship if they're in a city. Um, and you see Araya probably with Howard and Lancian. Oh. Um, the wolf pack is not there. You can see that the wolf pack has obviously gone off somewhere into the city, um, but Araya, as soon as she sees you, is looking at you in a very weird way. Araya, I have news. Yes, Captain. So we've spoken to the spoken to the the kind of general leaders of the military of Dragonborn here and another dragon. Mm -hmm. Dragon, and dragon peoples, mm -hmm. dragons and dragon folk alike. Mm -hmm. Very dragony. Everything's dragony. We are welcomed here. We must uh, obviously treat the place with respect. Yes, oh. with uh, the ground crew here of the Dragonborn, they have uh, told us that whilst the ship is technically impounded, we are free to go and free to explore the city as we wish. Um, A day or two at maximum, we're hoping to speak ah. with the general, but uh, he comes in and out of consciousness. Oh, interesting. Uh, I will let the rest of the crew know. Um, and as a note, Captain, <laughs> There may be things that you and I should speak about. Just so I understand 
the nature of the ship and relationships between people. Oh. 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 Yep. Moral of the crew is very Someone important. was someone was looking for you, quite adamant. Really? Interesting. Yes. Right. Noted. Noted. I would and Why are you being weird? As an interest, huh? is, has Lucius taken the little woven no, rope ring off so it it's hasn't. still on? Araya look like glances down. What is Ayla's passive insight and wisdom and perception? <laughs> Eleven. Yeah. No. Like, you she don't know. You just, like, yeah, she, just, she's, she's just like, why are you being weird? Yeah. She's like, I would recommend that perhaps you consider how to resolve the situation. Resolve? Yes. There's a situation? Yes, the uh, Dragonborn. It's fine. I'm resolving got that, though. It's, fine. it's not... It's not anything you need to worry about. Okay. It's nothing you need to worry about. Either. Okay. As long as Lucius is aware of it. Our captain is aware of everything. Good. Uh... You know, as a, it is the first mate's, normally, it is the first mate's responsibility to take care of such actions aboard a ship. Really? Mm. Mm. Good. I'm glad you're here. I have a spell for that also. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, myself, Howard and Lancian are going to go check into one of the taverns. Um, any expenses I'm assuming that we can charge back to yourself, Captain? Yes, Nova's got the bank. Very well. All right. We'll find, <laughs> we do. will find somewhere reasonable. Wherever Nova is, she has a shudder. <laughs> we will find somewhere reasonably priced. Can we uh, mediate everybody's spending Course. budgets? I've, the wolf pack have said that they are intending to use their own wages um, that they will be spending. Um, myself and the officers will be, obviously we expect our accommodations to be paid for, so. Yes, absolutely. But the wolf pack will basically spend their own money. Yes, uh, we'll uh, reconvene every day yes. to update each other. All right, very well. Uh, I believe that we will be staying in a part of the city called uh, Hope's Ransom. Um, it, is a, it is a district of the city for people from Gold Throne uh, that set up permanent residences. Interesting. So, right. we will be staying there. Very uh, well. Very well. Um, uh, and with that, so we'll ju kind of jump around. Oh, go on. Where's our doctor right now? Uh, Greylano, I believe, was, uh, has gone off into the city as well to right. purchase supplies, I believe. Right, supplies. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> So jumping around a bit. <laughs> uh, do, do, do these guys know? As what, like in no, character? Know. No, no, in character, no, nobody no. except Sentry Lookout. saw some. No, Lookout saw, saw yeah, you. Lookout, yeah. lookout saw okay. you coming back, and now Orion knows because someone was looking for you um, and has heard the story of what happened. Um, I love maybe, dice rolls. Maybe, maybe I really do. Yeah. <laughs> but, I I asked you like, yeah, okay, do you want to crowd? I'm going to roll. Mm? And also, I think like you had to roll a persuasion, which you're normally really good at, and you got like a seven or something. I got that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, jumping around a bit. Um, Sentry is basically taken to uh, the four, uh, the kind of bottom four half of the uh, of the the warship of the Vivex. Um, those of you who are accompanying her, you walk past one of the key things that strikes you that you walk past is a what can be described as a hatchery. And you can see it's behind a large glass, um, like translucent crystal wall. And there is a armed door where two very well-armed dragonborn are stood outside it. And inside you see a very, uh, a quite large bra uh, brass dragon um, who is basically playing with three little wormlings. <laughs> um, and there are clutches of eggs around the room. And you can see that she's going around and checking on them. And the little wormlings, they don't seem to have the intelligence of dragons yet. They're almost like little Aww. animals. They're kind of like jumping around and like playing. Burping um, fire. Yeah. How big are they? The wormlings, they're like probably like, they okay. range from like the size of like a big Labrador to probably like a Great Dane. Like Aww. they kind of go from like, yeah. Like, I thought I was expecting like a tiny. No, no, no. These one, they're, they're still pretty big because like a young dragon is like as big as yeah. you know two Aww. horses. A wagon. I guess so, the like, eggs are huge as well. Like. The eggs are pretty big. Yeah, they're like you know pretty tall and wide. Little yeah. doggins. Yeah, little doggins. But you walk past the hatchery, um, and and if you look in for too long, the two dragonborn soldiers are like move along. Like they, they don't let anybody they're kind of linger adorable. in the area. They kind of just look at you and glare. Um, but essentially, you're taken to. 
what can be best described as an armory. You can see that there are forges. Cool. There are tool stations, almost like jewelers stations with magnifying glasses and fine tools, crystals arrayed everywhere. Vials of powders and liquids, like alchemy labs scattered around. And there are dragonborn in robes. Some of them appear to be reciting runes, inscribing runes on shields or on armor, um, and all sorts of like technical and magitech bits and bobs kind of scattered all over the room. Um, you are led in uh, by, uh, what was it, Uldak, I think? I'm trying to, I've got so many fucking was, names. Yeah. Ulmac. Ulmac. Uh, Colonel Ulmac leads you in um, and introduces you to a, uh, I think that actually they probably wouldn't be a dragonborn, the head artificer. I think that they would probably be a dwarf. Oh, sweet! Uh, um, and you see that this uh, this <laughs> young man, he doesn't have a beard, which is already kind of a bit off-putting to mm. see on a dwarf, but he has these huge lamb chops that just come <laughs> oh, right down yes. and are quite, quite bushy. You can see that his long hair has been pushed back, some of it braided, but a lot of it's just been slicked back with like a thick grease or like a kind of like some sort of pomade that he's just like nice. slicked all the way back and then it kind of descends into braids and dreadlocks. Um, wearing what almost looks like a blacksmith's apron and like blacksmith's gear. And he's got these big bulging biceps and arms, big hairy forearms um, and then thick leather gloves. Um, and he kind of like pulls up these like goggles and looks. Hold on. <laughs> Guardian. Yes, 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 yes. Come along, come along, young man. Uh, we need to examine uh, this guardian. We need, we need to uh, check on a few things for her. Uh, do you have, do you have the senior technicians? Yeah. Oh. Follow me. And he just kind of like holds out a hand and just looks up at you like. Wow. Can I, can I address <laughs> him in dwarvish and like introduce yeah. myself to him? Oh in yeah, dwarvish? yeah, sure, yeah. So you just say to him, like, oh, I'm sentry yeah. kind of thing. I speak Dwarvish. Well, there you go. Yeah. So you can understand. Anybody who speaks Dwarvish understands. Uh, he looks up. Nothing. And he's <laughs> nothing. like, and in Dwarvish, he kind of says, he kind of bows. Uh, and in Dwarvish, he goes like, I don't have a fucking name for this guy. Okay. He just is like, why, hello? No, hang on. Why he's is he He's Savonin, so I'm trying to remember. Like, <laughs> I've got a lot of fucking accents up here, okay? Uh, he's Savonin, but he's not Southern Savonin. He'd probably be from the Northern Savonin, so he'd probably, I guess he would be more Californian or like kind of Midwest. So he's like, oh, hey, hi. Uh, sorry, um, my name is, uh, uh, my name is Tormen. Tormen. What? Junior artificer, uh, Tormen, Tormen Duggersteel. Lovely to meet you. I'm Sentry. Dugger Steel. Nice to meet you. Um, sorry. I'll say sup in Dwarvish. Hey, hello. Hi. Oh. I know this one. Yeah, sure. I got this. Wow. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, I don't. Saying. Oh, and he kind of sorry, like corrects I himself. Mean... He's like, oh, sorry. I, I don't, I don't talk a lot. Um, fo follow me. And he kind of like gestures over. I probably shouldn't talk a lot. And you can see a lot of Dragonborn. They look like wizards, but they kind of like in long, beautiful robes, hand embroidered, uh, exquisite work. And they just kind of turn, see something going on, and they just move over, kind of like doctors, kind of surrounding. Cool. Um, Tormund kind of leads you over, and he like he's like, please uh, li lie down up here. And he points to this kind of like elongated. Um, it looks like a workbench, but it's been cleared, so it's just kind of like a flat table. Um, you can see there are, there are all sorts of devices kind of on the walls around it. Um, and he's just like, no, lie, lie down, please. Thank you. Uh, all right. Do we need to leave? No. Right. It's not a <laughs> private, like, doctor, uh, patient situation. No. Do you need someone to hold your hand, Sentry? I'm not a doctor. Um, maybe. Nova, hold Sentry's hand. Huh? What? I was just, like, Nova's just lost looking at everything. <laughs> wow. Got this. Can I just ask what you intend to do? Yeah, have you any experience with Guardians? Me? Yes. No. No. They do. He, he points to the, there are now these four very imperial, straight-backed dragonborns. Uh, red, white, copper, and black. Awesome. Um, and they're just kind of peering down. And they've got these kind of like masks over their long snouts, oh, but they're like metal, kind of almost cool. like these the kind of metal masks. plate yeah, masks. Yeah. And they look down. They don't speak. They look at each other. And you get the sense that maybe they're communicating telepathically with each other oh. as they just look around. 
and then they gesture, and then one of them, it's like, shh, shh. do not worry, my dear Arakokra. We, however, do have experience. Young Tormund here is uh, learning the art of his artifice. Right, and what is it you intend to do with our guardian? Olmac is like, oh, well, uh, he kind of whispers to them, and then they're like, I believe that you have reported oh. that your guardian friend has been suffering from lapses in cognitive behavior. Mm -hmm. And there is also a concern that she may harbor scrying potential. Okay. There is now. Then we will ex examine for these elements. And what does examine uh, in include? What does that involve? Very long technical explanations. It will take... It is safe, if that is what you are worrying. Are you going to hurt her, though? Of course not. Great. That's all we needed to know. Should we go in? Well, what if you... Before you shut the mask, what if you uh, do find a, a scrying device? Then we will need to find a way to remove it. Okay. It'll or be okay. your guardian friend will need to leave the city immediately. Okay. It'll be okay. Cross that bridge. <laughs> come to it. The mask kind of ch -ch 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 slides back into place. Can no decisions be made without us knowing first? I mean, we're going to stay here anyway, right? The, the four Dragonborn look at you, expectingly waiting for something more of a compelling argument as to why they have to listen to you. Because she's extremely important, and she has a mission that could save the world. And he's the captain. Because without her, <laughs> we aren't cooperating. We all have a mission to save this world. Guardian. Do you wish for these people to speak? It will make the process much longer if we must run through every small procedure and gain approval. I'm happy for them to to say if they need to say anything. They are my friends, after all. Very well. How about if you're not comfortable, you let us know. Otherwise, we can continue. Does that sound fair? Yes, you can always contact us. Sentry, you can... Yeah. Okay. You let us know if you're okay. Okay. Nova can hold your hand, right? We are here to hmm? do the job. Me. I very much trust you. <laughs> do what you gotta do. It takes probably a couple of hours. And so those of you, maybe you get bored, maybe you need to find a place to sit down or something else. There are no chairs, so you I'll go scouting around, I think. Um, the process varies. At points, sentry, uh, you are conscious. Um, they do things like hook tiny wires up to kind of strange glass tubes with filaments inside. Uh, they bring over crystalline rods that seem to react and change color as they bring them closer to you. Um, a lot of it is they place things connecting to your matrix, this kind of hollow, this kind of glowing crystal in your torso. They place connectors to it and then they run it to... Uh, strange box-like machines where there are runes that appear on kind of like a crystalline plate and there's a lot of sort of like nodding and shaking their heads at one another. Um, and then there, one of them kind of turns and he slides the mask open. I will need you to shut down temporarily uh, as if going to sleep. Okay, no problem. Just so that we can access more of your more recent uh, experiences. Okay. And you kind of close your eyes and you feel that the power beginning to ebb away as you kind of begin to close yourself off into your low-powered state. Um, and sweet memories. Beautiful memories. Um, Jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> you have moments of a soft, tiny hand in yours as you walk through uh, a garden full of roses and plants and flowers. There are flashes to holding a green tabard in your hands for the first time. Uh, but all pleasant memories. There are no memories of the war, there are no memories of battle, just quiet moments that normally would be so easily forgotten. But in this low powered state where you almost have control, they're as, as if they were happening all over again. For those of you on the outside, uh, you see the Dragonborn connect a kind of crystalline headband to Sentry's head. 
and then they uh, connect kind of thin wires from their own masks to the headband and close their own eyes. 10, 20 minutes go past, and then they disconnect, reconnect the wires back into their masks, not amongst themselves. Um, and then they take Sentry's hand, place it onto a piece of metal, um, and then begin scribing runes around the outside of it. You take it off, examine. Mm. You don't wake up, Sentry. The memories are too sweet, too kind, too enjoyable. Mm. Why you, you almost don't want to repower back on? Like why would you? Yeah. You know you're here in a time and place, and like I said, it's almost as if you're there again. Uh, the Dragonborn kind of look a bit strangely. Your guardian does not appear to be waking up. As in, as if. A slumber, or I, I mean, they do not sleep. Um, they enter a low-powered state where they conserve energy. But uh, normally, she would rouse by now. I go and just gently start shaking Sentry. Yep. Can I use the messenger ring and just be like, Sentry, hello, Sentry. You begin to hear, like, very faintly in the memory, you just hear Nova's voice kind of very faintly echoing just on the edge of consciousness, like, Sentry, hello, Sentry. Yeah. Um, do you want to wake up? I'll start to rouse you. Okay, so yeah, so you watch as Sentry's eyes begin to glow and fill with power as she wakes up. Hey, what happened there, bud? I was, I was... Did they do it? Was it them? It no. was not us. Uh, we weren't supposed to hear that. <laughs> I, was, I was home. I was home again. In Solvin? Yeah. It was nice. It was really nice. I get that. Whilst those two are talking to Sentry, the Dragonborn notions to Ayla and Lucius. I was, uh, pulls you over to I was the side. Good. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, he'll look over and kind of <clears throat> gesture to the side while they're talking to Sentry. Um, two of the Dragonborn come over and then two remain with Nova and uh, Quill. Uh, the lead one kind of slides the mask off of his neck, places it on the side... There is some news, whether it is good or bad, I afraid that will be down to you to determine. Your guardian friend, Sentry, do you remember how much time she think she had left? She's 13? Mm. Is she 13? Or in that? It is unusual. We are seeing signs that her matrix should not be degrading already. A matrix showing signs similar to others that we've seen that would would give an indication that she is around thirteen to twelve to thirteen years of function. However, there are anomalies, signs of energetic stress, uh, arcane warping. We believe that she may have been in contact with several. Do you know if she's ever had contact with creatures that have attempted to drain life force from her? Yes. And you said that we've had reports that she was brought back. She had... Uh, yes, she fell. Mm. It was Starbane's matrix star that powered her back up again. The fact that you are able to repower her is impressive. You must have... I do not know how you accomplished it. Even we do not have that knowledge or power. Whatever has happened has sheared years away from her lifespan. We think that perhaps there may be three months of time left. Three months? You're certain of this? We cannot ever be certain. This is, we have honed our understanding. We have worked with many guardians in the past, but it is not an exact science. But we are able to read energy levels from guardians. We have an understanding of roughly their time frames. We cannot tell you if her processes will simply shut down or if she will show erratic behavior. There are things I can provide. We can give you a special, uh, a wand of sorts. It contains not really a spell, but energy. If she becomes erratic or if she shuts down for a long period of time, you will be able to restore her to her current self. It is temporary. It is a temporary solution. 
and we don't How long use. was that temporary solution last? It would last a few. It will not last. Uh, it is more that it, there's perhaps enough for five doses. Um, but once used, she will return to normal function. The difficulty with Guardian's behavior is that it deteriorates. The deterioration gets worse and worse the closer they are to their limit. Um, as I said, there is no formal amount, but she has approximately, a, I, would, I would estimate to be about three months of rational functionality left. Armadassus mentioned that you were capable of extending her life. Is that not possible? It's possible. It's risky, however, and it requires a very powerful magical device uh, to effectively for centuries matrix to feed off of. Okay. Well, there's some potential there. I'll take that. We leave that in your hands. And the expansion, the extension to her life frame, it would not be long. No. Enough. The secret to repowering guardians was lost. With the sundering, the destruction of Arois. We are doing our best, but uh, how to describe it? It is like trying to refill a cup with a waterfall. So much energy is lost and displaced and, and pushed away. We do not know how to properly control and to funnel that energy back into her matrix. Effectively, we'd be bombarding her with magical energy in the hopes that her matrix will absorb some of it. That is the best we can hope for. Well, our current mission is to try and find more information. If you find any, the guardians of Aroes would be very pleased to know. This is a problem that affects many. We've had many guardians come to us, been sent in our direction. We do what we can, but there is no, we do not know how to make more. We do not know how to repower those that already have. They are a dying race. Once the last guardian this matrix runs out, there will be no more. Um, this, is, this is a private, so do you want to pop over? I'm like, yeah, so like Quill and Sentry are left kind of having a chat, yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt, just caught that last bit there. Um, have you heard of a, a guardian called Breeze? What this guy? I'm afraid that we have not, no. We encountered him in Callie's Rest and he, he seemed to make himself some sort of, um, I don't know how to describe him. He, he believed that he can extend Guardian's life by casting a necromantic, necromantic ritual that took magical energy mm. from humans and fed it into matrixes. Ghastly. And which essentially killed the person. Which killed it's the, a sacrifice, yeah, it's not a it's solution. A sac but he, now, I don't agree with any of that, but I'm saying, is there something in his method we could reverse engineer and, and with your knowledge? Like... Even if we could, I do not, we would not use this kind of magic. No, 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 but there is definitely, there seems to be some form of transference that yes. can be done. Yes, of course. Magical energy cannot be completely destroyed or created, but it can be transferred. This we already know. We transfer energy from Vivex himself into our weapons and our armor here in the Draconis Militarum. That is the same process we would use to give some power back to Sentry Guardian, but the process is not exact. It is wild, it is dangerous, it is erratic. The best we could hope for is perhaps giving her months at best. That's better than nothing. It is, but as I said, you will need you will need <laughs> to provide something of substantial magical power in its place to, to provide that energy. We only have so much, I and mean, I'm sure your guardian is very precious to you, but we have our own needs. Would an Eterna power her? Eterna are powerful. I do not. I could not speak to the effect it would have on the Eterna itself. Yeah. You you say saying those words. Tiangong gives you images of Silver Edge being... Mm. You, you get senses of fear. Like, not of you, but the things you're saying. Mm. You get the sense that Tiangong doesn't... I'd like to clarify, I'm not saying that because I'm thinking, I'm just no, no, no. the scientific process. But you're just... Process. But like, also yeah. Tiangong doesn't necessarily know that. Yeah, yeah. 
So, but also because I'm, I'm thinking because it was Silver Edge that took her energy. Some of it, yeah. Um, not just, not just Silver Edge. Other things in the past have also oh, yeah. done similar effects. But yeah. So with that, we're gonna take a break. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then man. you can decide how you want to tell Sentry. How cheery. Did I hear Yay! that? No, we didn't From where I was, well. could I hear that? No. I, I think it's, I think for me as a DM and the narrative of the story, I think it's better that Quill and Sentry are kind of like just keeping each other company and then you look over and before we go on break, like if it was a movie, you would see basically like Quill and Sentry having a nice chat about her memories and then you look at it and in the background and we see Nova, Ayla and Lucius just looking at the two of you knowing that they have to tell you somehow. <laughs> oh boy. That's that's where we go to break. Not what a it. damn Not cheery it. episode. <laughs> oh boy. As always, I'm going to read out some donos uh, while everyone takes a little breaky. Lefty. Ooh. Little breaky. Ooh. Little breaky. Hard hitting. Oh boy. I'm going to make it, man, you give me this juicy yeah. like trauma, I got to use it. It's I got to use it. It's good, I love it, I love it. Feels yeah. Three months. Get a fucking crack on, eh? Get a fucking move on in fixing century. Yeah. What? Oh god. <laughs> We're stuck. We're stuck in this place. Are you? No. Could break free. I mean, doesn't we don't I feel free. free. Huh? I don't feel free. Well, you're not free yet, but you could be. <laughs> right. Mm. I will read some donos. Ola Renve, thank you very much for the donation. No message. Mere Kitty, thank you very much. Uh, good luck trying not to get burnt this week. We want you all to make it our life so we can see the glorious honeymoon. Oh dear lord. Sorry, my mic is still on. He's still here. He's still here. Uh, thank you very much. Crabs with arms. Hey guys, I saw the fan art film poster for Eroes, so I wanted, it, so I casted it. Smeek, Andy Circus, of course. Quill, Martin Freeman. Ooh. Lucius, Timothy Chalamet. I don't know who that is. Okay. Nova, Maisie Williams. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Century, Gwendolyn Christie. Okay. Cool. Rose Leslie for Ayla. Who's Rose Leslie? Um, Egret in Game of Thrones. That's a lot of Game of Thrones Redhead. people. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know you nothing, know, John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I can see that. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Crabs with Arms, for a generous donation, too. Frank the NPC episode prediction. The Sloths have received a one-way invitation to annoy the King of the Dragons, who has a taste for Wild Elf. At the same time, the Starbane operating system 3.5 attempts to possess the Golden Dragon ship. All those wacky sloths. Hmm. We'll see if that prediction holds any value. I don't know what is going on with my hair right now. Look at it. It's just like, it's got so much height. I don't know what to do. Uh, Nightjar, Katie's not here, but thank you. Glad you're feeling better, Katie. I will let her know, Nightjar, when they return. Uh, the Schnub, sending a couple of gold pieces for Century's Enchanted Warm Plate Armor Fund. Need to keep Robo Mum happy and protect. Well, certainly now they do. Keep up the good work, guys. I love every minute of High Rollers. It's the highlight of my week. Well, thank you very much, the schnub. Lightning Wing Dragon. Uh, yeah, that meeting is totally getting interrupted. No, it wasn't. It was fine. Thank you very much, Lightning Wing Dragon. Uh, Hyperlul. 500 bits. I just realized in the HR chat that since Vala is Starbane's daughter, is she not technically a princess? She is space royalty at the very least. And she's so sweet and nice, and the HR chat wants to protect the child. And Sentry did guard a royal family, so potential royal space guardian Sentry. Thinking emoji. I guess, what is the daughter of an emperor? A daughter of an emperor isn't a princess, though. I don't think there is a title for the daughter of an emperor. No. So, but if the emperor dies, Valor would become the empress. Get out of here. Get out. Uh, Silver23, thank you very much. Hey, hi, Rollers. I'm catching up on the Eroes campaign. However, I'd woken up at four in the morning to donate to you guys. Thank you for getting me through school and making me smile at the end of the day. Got an exam tomorrow, so wish me luck. Get some sleep, Silver, but thank you very much. Lightning Wing Dragon, it's all connected. Starbane is brookstoning you. Thank you very much. Everyone's brookstoning you. Hi, Paul. 500 more bits. The dragons gave their bodies, mind and soul to power the ships. Hey, Nova did that. A few sessions ago when we almost died from stress over gosh darn stairs. Also, Kim has been pulling the greatest faces this stream, my lord. Have you been pulling faces, Kim? Yes. Just anytime anyone gets close to talking about ILS. You're like, yeah. Because I ain't ready to give that up. Thing is, is I think the part, like, no, no Lucius, knows. I don't think would have really mentioned it that yeah. much. So, yeah. It's no one knows I took it. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Nobody knows that you took it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nightjar, thank you for a donation, no message. Pepperfruit Pesto, love from the podcast. Well, thank you very much. 
Hope you enjoy. Lightning Wing Dragon again. Here's a thought on the more technical side of Guardians. What if there's a glitch that occurs after a few years, like certain parts wear and tear? Instead of conserving power, the Matrix actually increases power consumption by showing good memories, etc. Also, what if a certain paladin kept using their Matrix for divine smites? Oh! I need those DAs oh. though, don't I? Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, James yeah. Hunter, four, 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 four. I had, I just felt I had to donate for Century, so I have fifteen Australian dollars. Damn you, Mark! You really are an awesome DM. Thank you very much. Not really. I'm just like mean. Uh, Bandai Nenzai, uh, <laughs> please take our poor Robo Mum away from us, please. I don't know if I prefer fearing for their lives. I don't know. Yeah, for fearing for their lives in conflict or wallowing in sorrow with these sad information dumps. Thank you very much. Sifi1126, hey guys, two years of watching you and now I'll finally be running my own game. We'll be playing Adventures in Middle Earth oh, and are having our character you. creation session next Friday. I'm beyond excited. Thank you for inspiring me. Love this. Ah, oh, fucking bit of Middle Earth, eh? Mm. Ah! Ah, uh, thank you very much. Raging Rhino. <laughs> it's a Gandalf noise. Ah. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Holy shit, I've got practice on my Gandalf voice. Raging Rhino, another donation, another question for players bar Tom. Do any PCs mm. other than Quill particularly worship any gods and why or why not? Mm. I don't think, I think like Lucius is like a little bit reverent for the Siaska. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but it's not like hardcore religious. It's Respect. like, Respect. like, you know, like somebody would just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a practicing Christian, but I don't like, I'm not a priest. You know, it's the difference. Ayla's like curious about the fear. Yeah, of course. She seems yeah. a fear, but she's still like, I don't know what's going on. Gods what? are weird. What? Mm. Delena. Oh, so is it like, do you feel like Sentry's leaning more towards worship of Elena? Given recent events, I feel like she needs to start paying oh. respect to Elena. Oh. Maybe taking that into account. Oh, interesting. Mm. Nova, atheist or not? She's not an atheist, obviously. She sees evidence of gods yeah, existing. Of course, yeah. But, but you're yeah, also from, a, you're from a city and a I'm culture honest, that done. came it's from a place that didn't have Beyond gods. Start, yeah, exactly. Right? Like, so, you were like, yeah. I think she treats them as, as an inter like she's interested in them, but she doesn't believe like in worship. She understands worship, yeah. but she herself doesn't worship, doesn't them. worship Yeah, She believes in them because yeah, they know there. that there's historical evidence. <laughs> yeah, of them. yeah. Well, I mean, like since the Sundering, like in the last 100 to 200 years, there isn't much evidence that they walk around. So there is this kind of younger culture who's like, yeah, but did the but gods really? really walk around? So there was definitely that in Vortensar. There yes, Vortensar. Who were just like, like yeah. was there right? Siaska really a goddess that yeah, gave her life? Yeah, absolutely. Like, so, that is that gif of Thor. Really? Is he really though? Is he? It's in the intro though. Yeah. So? <laughs> also, Quill doesn't really worship Hesper. He doesn't worship him. He was chosen by power. him. Yeah. Chosen by him, but doesn't you really... You chose divine power. Yeah, yeah. I, but it, it's not like he's, yeah, right. you know, constantly praying to yeah, him and is a priest too cold. of Hesper. I can't Hesper. eat it all in one go. Yeah. Um, and obviously the interesting thing is uh, Nova certainly has information now about the gods that perhaps the other players don't have, about how maybe they're not really gods. See, I've been thinking about Times. that a lot. Well... I haven't. Because I'm not allowed to. We jump back in, and uh, now is the perfect time. This is, you know, if you guys uh, want to go, if you want to kind of speed ahead to finding your rooms at a local inn, or if you want to take some time to wander around the city, or if you want to have conversations, particularly hard conversations. I'd ahead. like to come back to that moment. Okay. Yeah. Handle that moment. Sure. Because I love emotions. <laughs> Face head on. Chris Trot's favourite DZ emotional. <laughs> hey, I'm giving you an out, man, but it's up to you. I mean, I guess while. Those guys are having a conversation. Hmm. I guess we're talking, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. So. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so Hi. you were in Solven. Yeah. W while you were asleep. Yeah. I. It's. It's weird. It's. It's. Just, the last couple of times that I've powered down. I've. I. I've been seeing more of Solven and more of home. I don't normally see that, and I don't know if it's because of help? the situation. I'm not, or if maybe being close to Solvin previously might have, might have triggered something. I'm not sure. Okay, but what about the Prime? Did you see anything about that? I haven't seen. I haven't seen the Prime recently. I'm no. just wondering, is the Prime still your objective? I if you're seeing more of home, maybe there's something there. Maybe, or maybe I just want to go home. <laughs> but 
I think I think finding finding the prime finding the city of glass will definitely help. It will help me. Okay. For sure. So I think we should should continue and try and try and get this sorted out. Well, that's what we all intend to do. Yeah. I mean, how do, how do you how do you feel about it's just about about everything? Um. Well. I feel, honestly, after we've delivered the message of Starbane to the Dragonborn, I mean, that's what I was meant to do. That's what I was trained to do, yeah. deliver messages. And now we've delivered the message. A little bit deflated. We were working towards an objective yeah. together, and now there's outsider influences who have seemingly taken control. Yeah. It feels like the sto it's not in our hands. Yeah. I think we should make an effort to become an asset to the city, to the leaders. Yeah. Find the other champions as well. Get them on side. Become the the reason the the, the reason we're all fighting. Yeah, I understand. I think have this by ourselves would have been too big for us to deal with. I think fi the, finding the Dragonborns now has been amazing because we were stuck, we were lost. Uh, yes. We didn't know who to tell, we didn't know who to turn to, but now it seems that through sheer luck we've come across allies that we can trust and who are powerful and strong and can deal with this. They can help us. Yeah. Um. We can cut back to the other guys. You're the priority. Well, as much as I don't want to be right now, I guess it's ended up that way. We need you, and we wouldn't do it without you. I wouldn't do it without you. <laughs> cut back. <laughs> so yeah, so like, I mean, like, yeah, is there like a like? Do you like reach up to hug Quill or anything like that? Yes, yeah, like... so just like I'll like hold his wing. Okay, so I'm on the time is going still. on. Like, yeah, I'm, like I've got like a hand on sentries. So like, you guys kind of like hold like gripping each other's like forearms or shoulders and stuff, and then yeah, like we cut back as the three of you get delivered the information you had been delivered previously. I think we'd all just share a nod, and then reluct I'd reluctantly turn around. Okay, and you walk back to the others, to Quill and Sentry. I don't think I should be the. Um, I, I could do it. Was, I can be there. I'm going to grab Ayla and I should talk, uh, Nova. Okay. Just grab them both just while they're mm. having this. And just kind of just start ow, walking. Ow, ow, together. Ow, 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 What's ow. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, I could just go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. <laughs> but, you know, do you, does Ayla like, let loose just kind of like lead her I away? pull my arm free but walk beside them. She's like, <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> no touch. Okay, yeah. So I guess like, yeah, yeah, you'll reunite. Is it beyond an insight check to see their faces? Like, I think Quill. I think it's pretty obvious. Especially Nova given. Wears, Nova wears her heart on her sleeve. Nova still, Nova still has a good force of personality. She obviously have a good charisma. It, I think it's Ayla who's really bad at keeping <laughs> things in check, and Ayla looks like. Hey, the, like, buddy. Like. <laughs> yeah. So I think that like the two of you kind of get the impression that something is up. You guys are smiling at Sentry, like, hey, <laughs> yeah, it's just a really creepy smile at Sentry. That's mm. the clue. Yeah, I'd just say that they were gone a while. Okay. Like, what are you chatting about? Well, <laughs> things. Well, Sentry, we uh, spoke with the, the Dragonborn. Okay. And they had a full assessment of you okay. and your current situation. And Nova will tell you. Three months! Three, mo three months to what? I'm so sorry, Sentry. Three, three months? Until Five, three, three months? months? No spying, no scrying, no spying, all good in that front. <laughs> yeah. three, all good. Three months Positives. until further the, degradation? No, nope, <coughs> but we're until... gonna, no, but we, the, the, you, we're gonna fix oh. it though before then, so it's fine. <laughs> I thought I had two. What happened? I thought I had two. So, 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 <clears throat> you know when Silver Edge tried to v and v and oh, um, no. uh, and, and we've, we faced other things that have done that v and the mm, and. And um, you did come back to life and. Uh, oh, um, that, yeah, oh, that, that was it. Mm. Yeah. It, it turns out it's, it's, it's damaged your matrix. Oh. And, and there are some anomalies and, um, 
to the tree, won't you? Uh, but we're on our way for help anyway. And we'll get there before that, and they might be able to help us out by giving us a thing. What did the thing? I didn't understand the thing. What was the they thing? They gave us a wand that has okay. five charges that can help reset you every time you go into shutdown. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so I'll be... There's no escaping it, so I, I will... It, it might happen. But the, the wand, it, it, it resets. Does it bring back time? Does it add? It's, it it's, helps with the... Uh, Brings her back oh. to how Symptoms. she is now. Yeah. So no, yeah, Nova and Lucius, like you guys having listened, and you know a little bit about Magitech from like your family and stuff. Like, yeah, this this wand is basically a, like a cure the symptoms, not the problem. It's like, tomorrow. It's, if if yeah. if Century starts, because it's not just like if Century shuts down and goes non-functional, but also if Century starts going berserk, aggressive, and yeah, you can use this to basically be like it's almost like a like a lesser restoration. You can basically be like boop and pull her out of it. Okay. Um. Okay, so what we'll do, okay, if when we get back on the ship, I, I, what we'll do is I'll, I'll go in my room and I'll lock the door and I'll stay there until we get to the City of Glass. No, and then that no. way, if anything happens, I can, I'll be in my room, you'll be safe, nothing will go wrong, Fendry. everything will be fine. Fendry. We'll be fine. Fendry. What? I'm not going to let you hurt anyone, but you're also not going to do that. So, I t it's fine. The... It's fine. The... We'll figure it out. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. All fine. Right, but but so we're we're stuck here for two days. We saw the ship; it's anchored down. We've got three months to get it to the city of glass. And what if the city of glass doesn't work? What if that's not the answer? Then we find the prime. We have two plans. See, I am two. confident. I am sentry, and I'll take your hands in mine. I am really confident we can do something about this. We know more than most. We've consulted with specialists. We've seen... We've seen other techniques. I'm sure I can crack this. I'm sure. If we go to the City of, of, of Glass and see what's there, and, and then if that doesn't work, then we find the Prime. Your unit said to find the Prime. We can do this. And, and three months? That's more than enough time. Okay. We brought both okay. of you back. That is we true. can do we have things. Back. Right. Uh, uh, right. Sentry. Yeah. Yes. I want to be realistic with you. Okay. I think we need to look at the worst case scenario. Yes. Okay. Tell it's me. It's all very well and good us being optimistic and trying our best, and we will absolutely. We've got three months, and I do believe Nova, and that we have lots of options. We need to face the inevitability that three months is all we've got. And we need to maybe consider, if bad things happen, yeah. what to do in that situation. And at least we know. Yeah, yes. At least you know. You know what to expect. I mean, to some extent. I, d I don't know what's going to happen. Well, none of us do. However, we've defied expectations so far, have we not? That's Think true. of the many encounters we've been in where we've scraped through and we've overcome incredible odds. This is just another one of those. Okay, I know you guys will do the right thing. And I want you to consider that if something were to happen and you genuinely fear for your safety, that you will do what you need to do. You know every single one of us will do 100% to make sure you do not. Fantastic, that's good, that's good to know. If I, even if I'm not sound of mind, hurting one of you guys in any capacity would destroy me more than this has destroyed me. We won't allow it, so don't worry about that. I can take a few punches anyway, it's fine. I'd rather you took none at all, Ayla. <laughs> I do think we should maybe take a couple of precautions. Number yes. one, no more fighting things that steal your life. Yep. There is a, there is a voice that kind of emanates in all of your minds. Um, up until now, Helios hasn't been speaking anything because he's obviously been amongst the company of Dragonborn and stuff. Hmm. But there is a, is it possible that perhaps my bonding with Sentry is assisting with the degradation process. I'm not sure how inter Interna and your Matrix interact, but if necessary, I can disconnect myself. Do you draw on her power to, to Not do to my knowledge, but please remember that until now, I have never really, my kind have not interacted with the Guardian as much before. I think we take every precaution. 
Very well. And there is a kind of like, as the mantle kind of evaporates and reforms into the kind of like imposing muscular leonine form, um, you're going to lose the boon of Helios okay. temporarily. Sorry, Sentry. That's but okay. I, I do not wish to put your life at any more risk. I understand. Yeah, she was tough before. She's fine. She's tough. I'm really okay. trying to be the positive one in the group, and this is very odd, and I'm sorry, but this is all I got. It's all I got. I'm yeah, going to keep it, doing it. I think it helps, frankly. Sure. Cool. Helpful. Helpful Ayla. That's a thing that no one thought would happen. <laughs> so, Helios. Yes. Your position. It is difficult. I can only really bond with people that have a certain mindset, a certain belief. I believe that Sentry is perhaps the only one within amongst you that I can bond with. I will travel with you. I can watch perhaps over your crew if need be. Uh, but, and he kind of looks at Ayla. This one I cannot bond with, nor with Mr. Quill. You carry an Eterna with you already. And again, Captain, you are not the type of person that I could bond with. Frankly, I don't really want to. Understandable. In that case, if you wish, I will go and seek out the crew and watch over them if need be. I think that would be useful while we're here. Makes sense. Very well. I'll miss your guidance, Helios. It's been nice having you. Just a hand on your shoulder. Stay strong, Sentry Guardian. Remember, it is the role of any protector to do everything they can to protect the people they care about. For you, stay alive. It's been an honor, thank you. Nods. You see a few dragonborn like, what the fuck the is fuck? this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he stomps his way through and out of the ship. Should we have warned the people that there's now a... You, you hear like, hey, stop. Hey, he just walked through us. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's the... It's the ca- I'm returning, <laughs> I'm with them. <laughs> okay, Steve so... So what? <laughs> Everyone's stupid, sexy something to Nova. Yeah, Nova just loves everyone. Stupid, sexy dragonborn. Stupid, sexy Am- Amadrasos. So what's the plan now? We we have two days until we can talk to this this general. Um, I don't think it's oh, a potentially good, two days. Like they said, a day or two. I don't think it's a good idea for us to disrupt the potential allies that we've just made, who are inviting us to this general meeting between all the leaders. I know that it seems like we have too little time, but is it going to be more to our detriment to piss off a lot more people? Unless we can explain the situation to them. I think we should try that first. I mean, we have, and they're holding their priority to the meeting of these leaders. What if we say that we will come back when we've investigated sentries? condition. Try and delay the meeting with the general. Just a little bit. We got a few months until that meeting. We need to deal with this and we can come back and meet them again. I don't think they're going to let us, frankly. The way that they hold authority here and that their arrogance. It's very much in. their way. We broke one of their rules. We Actually, it's a, I feel like a mercy that they're not keeping us here for two weeks rather than two days. And for us to just go over their airspace and for us to be, their normal uh, situation is to be arrested Mm -hmm. for weeks. Civil laws, (laughs) they're the best. Seems pretty harsh and strict, which means if we were to leave unauthorized, they'd chase us and that could- No, I don't think we should leave unauthorized. We should try and talk to them. Hey, I'm great at talking to people. Real great at it. We can certainly try, but uh, we might, ha- we might be stuck anyway. Well, if we are, then we are, but we can try. Okay. I mean, with respect to Sentry, I mean, she's just one cog in a big dragonborn machine to them. The priority very, is very information. Mm-hmm. And we're that information. What's one guardian to everything we know? Yeah. They'll keep us here. I mean, they've treated us with respect thus far, and they've given us access to all this and information about me that you guys now know. Only because they want something from us. True. 
that. But that's way more if we didn't know that and continued without that knowledge. So my question is, what do you guys want to do now? You're currently still in like these um, like this like artifices workshop in the ship. Um, I will say that probably Amadrasos uh, uh, can has given you like physical address for a, a tavern or a, a hotel to stay in. Uh, it seems to be in something called the South Commune, um, which is uh, on the southern side of the ship on the city. Um, I don't have a name for the tavern, so. Well, do you sure. want to check out the Messengers Guild? No. You're a bird. You like that? I mean, I was like that. Not now. Okay. Do you want the wand, Quill? Do you think it would make most sense for Quill to have it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you notice you've you've known Sentry the longest. You'd notice something going awry. I'll be spending the most time with her from now, anyway. Makes sense. It's for you to have it, I think. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. I don't have an item, but yeah, like note down and then I'll add it to your inventory after the session. I quite fancy some cake. It's been a while since I've had some cake. We warm can get you plates. some warm plates. Warm, warm plates, plates and cake. Warm cake. And then we can, if you want us to, like, you know, bust out of this place, pow, Ooh. pow, you tell us. If you want us to stay, you tell us. Well, that applies to you as well. Okay. Am I doing okay? Fine. Am I doing okay? <laughs> Okay. So you guys want to like head out into the city and basically find somewhere to get something to eat? Yeah. It sounds it. Cake. I've just got to stock up. I'll meet you there. Okay. I'm just going to go see if we've got the right stock. I mean, that sounds like a quartermaster. Do you want me to come with you? Nope. <laughs> what stock is it? Is it heavy? Do you need a hand? Nope. Tiny things. Remedial things. Are you buying jewelry for yourself? No, I'm is not. It, is it Howard's Some gin? Some gems. Again? It's not Howard's gin, no. No, it's... it's what? What? How do you... Oh, his... Wait, have you been drinking the... No, but... Well, anyway, I've got to get some personal items that are very personal to me. Right. So, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> don't need to pry any further than that. Okay. So my next question is, is how soon does Lucius split the party? Yep. Like, do you wait for them to find somewhere to eat and then you go off on your own? Or just I'm as soon as you just, get off the ship? I'm just nipping off on the way to the tavern to okay. stock up on treatment for certain injuries. Right, that I, I see, ah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 all right. Wait, what? Yeah, no, you'll we'll find out. So, so like, basically, you're like, okay, you head this way and you're just gonna go from oh, like a little apothecary shop okay. and then you're gonna yeah. stop in and then you're gonna then go off. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Just a brief detour. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that we, we can do that uh, while the rest of the game. So yeah, you kind of split off and you head south of the great warship itself, the Vivex, and you begin making your way through. And there's a couple of interesting things about the city that you notice as soon as you kind of leave, right? Um, just like little world building things. The first is that um, the closer build, the, the buildings that have been built closest to the ship are made almost from different materials. They're made from like a very dark red, um, almost like clay brick and the wood used for their roofing is like this very thin, almost like, um, you know, uh, kind of like the kind of wood that you might find in a desert or in a, you know, an arid landscape. But as you get further and further out away from the ship, the buildings start looking more like Suvonan buildings that you've seen in like cities like Cayley's Rest, like proper dark gray, mm. quarried stone, lumber from the ironwood you suspect. Um, almost like they've imported more goods as the city's built outwards and kind of expanded. Um, you know that there is... The ship itself is on uh, on near the edge of the island, so there is like a docks with it leading out to sea, and there's this constant call of merchant ships coming in and kind of ringing of bells, and uh, the smell of sea air permeates through the city itself. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very busy. Uh, you can see that whilst the ship has a lot of soldiers... Out in the city, there are the occasional patrols and guardsmen, but most of it just looks like mostly Dragonborn civilians. Um, the civilians all look very well. They've got good athletic builds. It looks like they probably have done military service at some point, but they're, now they are you know, bakers or they're smiths or they've taken up some sort of craft or laboring skill um, and they're going about their normal business. Some of them look a bit older. Some of them might have like certain injuries or handicaps that mean that they can't contribute to the military society. So instead they perform other duties like running shops or labor and stuff like that. There's also a lot of um, 
foreign folks that have come in. So Suvonan dwarves, um, humans, orcs, dwarves, tieflings, jangling with the bells on their horns, kind of jangling around as they come up. Um, as soon as they see a group of you, the tieflings all come up and they're just like, ah, hello friends, where are you going? Ah, let us help you, where do you, you wanna go? And they're trying to give you advice, they're trying to sell you maps of the city. Like, they, they just have wares. And like, they have these coats that they open up and they're like, hey, you wanna buy some nice jewelry? Pretty lady, do you wanna buy the jewelry? Buy the jewelry, or like, they have like food in there or they have like bottles in a little cart that they're wheeling around. And it's never, as soon as you say, no, 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 thank you. They just, they're like, okay, and then they just go off and they head off in their own way. But you can say it's a very vibrant animated, like, lifestyle that they lead. And normally after they've kind of, like, shoved loads of wares, a very beautiful golden-skinned humanoid will basically pull them back and be like, hey, come on, give them some space. And, like, pull, sorry about them. They just, they really want to sell stuff. Um, and you get, those are their ASMR bodyguards who have, like, traditionally always followed the tieflings around to protect them from other people <laughs> and to protect other people from them um, is the kind of relationship that they have as they kind of wander around. Um, but Lucius, yeah, you you cut off and you find tucked away, um, uh, not quite a doctor or a hospital, but like a, a healer, like a kind of like basic level, like local healer um, who has like a small little triage center with various beds, very luxurious kind of like feather filled um, pillows and straw mattresses laid out in a large chamber. Uh, it's a dragonborn man, um, a, quite a rotund. He's got a bit of a belly on him um, and he's kind of got this big heavy smock and he kind of is like, oh yes, welcome traveler, Hello. Do oh, Dr. Parthenox. Dr. Oh. Parth. Oh, good. Uh, good to meet you, Dr. Parth. How can I help you, sir? I've you got a few injuries. Of course. Least. You are a traveler, yes? Yes. Um, there is a small uh, gold piece fee for treatments for any foreigners in the city. Right. <laughs> right. Where's your bank? <laughs> 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 Can I put down a deposit? I'm afraid not, sir, no. I'm afraid. I have no guarantees that you will return. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you don't have the coin. <laughs> You're so welcome bad. to return. It is a flat fee. I'm afraid, my lord, it is part of the tax to the city. Uh, I cannot simply offer my services for free. Uh, got a bedroll. <laughs> Let me look up how much a bedroll is worth. <laughs> Not much. Oh, I don't think it's much. So it might be. It might be worth a gold though. Like one gold piece. One gold piece. Mother, just check and make sure. Worn, chat's though. Not... Oh, worn. that's okay. He'll he'll take it. Bedroll's useful. Worn. One gold ages. piece. Um, it is pretty worn. <laughs> he is <laughs> a lot of shit. Normally, I I do not take things in jail. The, the <clears throat> two silver and the bedroll would be sufficient. How about? I leave this as a deposit and I'll exchange it for a gold piece, which is better for you, and I'll take this back. But I'm keeping it with you for now. The bedroll and two silver pieces, and if you return, I will return the bedroll to you for a gold. That's a perfectly great deal to me. Very well. Do you do uh, just walk-ins? Uh, he looks around. There's, you can see there's a couple of patients, um, but he's like, yes, of course. I, I'm not particularly busy at the moment. Do you have a screen, Laura? you wish to discuss it privately, of course, yes, come with me. Um, and he leads you to a back room where there is like a kind of, he pulls across like a curtain I at the top of the room. I love that we're going through this whole Absolutely, and he's just like, now, what seems to be the problem? I was violently attacked by a wolf. Oh. <laughs> Very well. Um, you are in remarkable condition. Uh, I was... If you, <laughs> show me where the injuries are. Everywhere. <laughs> and I'll take off my robe. Uh -huh. <laughs> And trousers. Oh my, yes. It does seem to have struck you everywhere. Cut the bottom of my feet as well as awful. <laughs> keep right now, keep in mind. These are not like deep wolf gashes. These look like they've been made by somebody who has very sharp kind of claws. You are in a dragonborn city, they all have claws, and you've come in asking to be discreet. And he looks and he's like, oh yes, a very savage wolf, it would seem. Awful. Yes, I mm -hmm. escape with my life. You should, my good sir, if I may give you some advice, I would recommend that you do not engage in such behaviours with, um, in the city. It is very violent. It's not often I get attacked by wolves in the city. Yes, wolves indeed. Well, they don't appear to be too deep. Uh, none of them have cut any major lacerations. There's no infections, are there? I, I will check, but it does not appear to be. I will give you an ointment which will help with the healing. Um, and keep it clean, um, and I can bandage them up if you wish as well. Yes, great. 
course. Is there any other um, <laughs> tests that are just generic <laughs> tests? <laughs> tests? Yes, I was... Unfortunately, it was a wild night, you see, and the wolf attacked me when I was inebriated. Mm. And I'm not completely aware of how much there is me. there is some things I can do yes you see what I mean I do <laughs> yes uh, well first of all I will I will give you and he kind of goes over and you can see he has like a kind of stoppered container and he pours you like a kind of very sour smelling fruit liquid drink this as a precaution it will not harm <laughs> it improves improves the body's natural defenses against uh, illness um, Thank you. And he takes that back. He's right, and then he's like, "Now sit down." And he the wolf just, had an awful cough. I just, just it may have waves <laughs> his hands over, um, and then places a hand on your shoulder, and it's like, I, "You, there are no lingering diseases or illnesses or poisons." Perfect. Existence. Good to know. It could have been rabid. I would recommend you are far more cautious in the future, sir. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like me. Do you require any uh, equipment to assist you in protecting yourself in the future? No, no that's... Well, I've already got my spells because it was a wolf attack, so <laughs> I wouldn't need... He slides over several small little packets. <laughs> <laughs> um, they are free to take. Right. Oh, it's just for entering. I get it. And I'll just like hurriedly <laughs> pack them away. He nods. Thank you. And he'll basically apply like an ointment over you and wrap, wrap bandages around you. It's a wonderful custom you have here. Freebies. Yes. We like to protect... We like to ensure that our citizens remain healthy. Yes. Oh, well, it's a good thing you have patrols. Indeed. I'm going to be backing out the wolves. whilst I'm um, speaking. It's like, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Good. I hope that we don't see each other again. Please. Oh, yes. Why would we? <laughs> Indeed. Can Bye. You please put that in your equipment list. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually just throw them away. Okay. Afterwards. Sure. Do what you want. They're yours I now. I'll do that. Okay. So you just like get outside and you're like, <laughs> I don't want to do with these. <laughs> panic, panic, throw them in a bin. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be caught with that. You okay. don't litter. Yeah, don't don't let a patrol see you littering. Oh, it's man. an instant fine, and I you're really not broke. I really wanted to, to give a demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> you He's a grown man. He's not going to no, give a demonstration. <laughs> Takes out banana. Do you know how to use one of these? It'd be like some sort of weird dragon aubergine. Or yeah. something. <laughs> no. So bumply and rippled. Have you got anything more appropriately sized for me? I don't know. Oh, a grape? Maybe a small oh, grape. <laughs> um. But yes, Lucius soon Aww. reunites with the team. Uh, the tavern, it's less of a tavern and more like a, um, not quite a hotel, but like a B&B. Like, a B &B. like, it doesn't look like it does raucous drinking. Um, but there is a Good. small restaurant, um, and there are very comfortable plush rooms. Word has already been sent ahead of you, and so the rooms are prepared, paid for by the, the Draconis Aww. military. There is also a guard. Okay. Um, a, a young dragonborn uh, woman. Um, looks quite young, uh, wearing kind of like quite fresh looking armor, um, and she kind of gives you a nod. Uh, I'm just simply here to look over you while you are at, well, at night, basically. Well, thank I'll you. be remaining in the premises. Is there any worry of anything happening? No, it's simply precaution. Okay. You are guests of the military, and so by our laws and our customs, you must have a guard in the evenings. You are permitted to walk around the city, you are safe and protected here, so I'm really just here as a... Um, what do they say? Babysitter? No, um, when you have to do something even though you, when you know it's not necessary. Caution? Uh, yeah. Precaution. Sure. Precaution. Something like that. Sure. Okay. Formality. That's what I was thinking. I see. I'm a formality. Sure. Just, I'm, I'm going to sit here and if you don't mind, I'm just going to read my book. Um, if you need me, come and find me. What, uh, yeah. what book? Huh? What book is it? Uh, it is a <laughs> book uh, about... Testing the DM. Tactics. About, is it by no, A. Plumbus? <laughs> it is by A. Plumbus. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. And it is a detective story oh. about uh, a series of dragonborn um, military investigators <laughs> uh, called... Uh, DCIS, <laughs> right? <laughs> and they they solve crimes in Dragonborn oh, cities. I didn't know involving the military. Didn't know A Plumbus was draconic uh, crime 
investigation services. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Mm. Is it a series? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what one, volume is that? Five, at one point. <gasps> oh my goodness, she I, loves must, them. I must know the names of the previous four. Well, you're going to have to go and buy them, so... <laughs> Please tell me more about the previous four books you've read, ma'am. No. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go back to reading it. Did I miss the cake? Did you have <laughs> cake yet? I think you guys have probably just like been like getting your room keys, getting like settled in, figuring out what you want to do. Uh, this place does serve food, but it's like a restaurant, so it's not like you can just walk in and be like, "Cake, I want cake." Um, Would you like to accompany us getting some cake? Actually, I will not say no. But where do we get cake? That's uh, so point. cake is not your best bet for that. Is heading over to Hope's Ransom, Dragonborn. We don't eat cake. We have. Approved meals and recipes uh, from the military. That's so boring. Uh, oh well, it's not so bad. Coffee's pretty good here. If you if you prefer uh, a very stimulating hot drink, um, we have coffee here, which is very good. Uh, there's a few little cafes and places you can get it and have a sit down. Um, but things like cake or any kind of non uh, so any Savonan food, you're best going over to Hope's Ransom. What about some sort of um, like a heated dish? A warm plate, if you will. I mean, we have plates, oh. but Can you warm and the mean to warm them. Yeah, I'm sure if you go pretty much anywhere that <clears throat> serves food, there'll be some way of doing that. Do you have any particularly floral plates that, from a distance, could look like a cake? Interesting. That, when warmed, could be applied to the sentry unit. <laughs> <laughs> she likes plates. I like I like warm plates. I got that. Yeah. <laughs> it's the idea of a plate that, if from a distance, looks like a cake. That's it's, kind of the one that's throwing me off. Well, if we can't get the cake, saying you might be able to get cake we just need to in another place. Yeah. We need to go. We can still get cake and just, warm plates. Okay. You want to go for a night train stroll? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of getting a little bit late, but it's not like late. late. <clears throat> it's, you know, like five, six o'clock. I'm going to go shopping. Bye. <laughs> I'll find you later. Don't spend all our what? Um, finances on, on Bye. novelty items. Gone. So Nova just runs off into, Where are you the, going? into the city. Do you need your, to follow? Your friend is running off. Do you I need... can't. No, technically, my only job is to protect you when you're sleeping. Oh, okay. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> should, we just, should we go get well, Nova? Maybe if you want to stay here, then you can, but we're going to go and get some cake. Mm. You want cake? Are you going after your friend or are you going for cake? No, we're going for cake. Mm. I don't know where she's going. She's probably going somewhere boring though. I shouldn't. I'm on duty technically. We're not asleep. No, but I'm still I'm still meant to be here. We'll bring meant you back to be like we'll be yeah. back. That's cake. really nice. Thank you. That'd be really if nice. If we signed in. If not, do you just want the plate? I don't know. Do you want coffee? That would be great. Coffee. Yep. That coffee would and a cake. definitely be great. Okay. They do them in little metal coffee. cups to, yeah. so you can take them away. Oh, okay. Yeah, bring me one of those. We'll bring you one of those. Super strong. Super strong. She's watching us sleep. Makes sense. Yeah. And then she kind of like, you can see that she's probably going to nap during the day and that's why she's not coming with you. So she's awake during the evening. Um, okay, so Nova runs off on her own into the city. Uh, where are you going, Nova? Can I find the gifty tieflings? Yeah, sure. Well, the, 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 the just fun, the tieflings. The yeah, of course you can. Yeah, they are brass coast tieflings. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. You, you run off. Oh, okay. What's a secret? Oh, no, she's written a secret note. DM. Oh. Just says I love you, Mark. Yeah. Okay. You're a great DM. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, Give me a thousand gold pieces. And then the idea of what you then you go and find them once you've got that. Uh, can I do one more? How far away is the ship? Like, the, are we allowed to go on the storm yeah, chaser? Yeah, you can go on. Yeah, you okay. can go on it. It's just you're not going to fly not away. Just not going anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Everyone's writing me notes now. Can I? Can I quickly <clears throat> go there and then have and a conversation it. and then come back to the group? Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll do that. We're gonna do that first. Okay. So this will take a bit of time. Yeah. Because you need to get it made. Two days. Um, no, they'll probably do it in a day. Okay. They'll probably do it in a day, and they're very excited. They're very excited about it. Um, and then they ask you where they should deliver it. Do you want them to take it to the tavern or the ship? Uh, I guess the tavern. So okay. Like whatever. Yeah. The they'll is. be like, they're, they're, it's um. In fact, the person you speak to seems to be maybe like a, a figure of renown. They kind of take you to go meet her, and it's this old lady tiefling. Ooh. Um, and her horns are kind of faded at the tips, but she still wears the danglies. She still dresses like she's 20. So she has like this tiny little top, but it's like Aww. just sagging on her and stuff. Um, and she's got like these like tight bell-bottom trousers and stuff. She's still rocking stuff. it though. Yeah, she's still rocking it. And uh, she's called Mercy. 
um, and she's the head of the Dragon Sworn family, which is the name of the tieflings that live in the area. And and she's just like, oh yes, of course, my dear. Yes, we'd love to. Lovely place you're staying. Yes, we'll bring it there right away. Thank you, um, ma'am. It'll cost like ten gold. Cool. Um, oh, no. <laughs> Fine. Just shattered. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? Did it shatter? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, that fuck. Oh, well. Oh, sure you know, are you open to refresh it? Oh, um, <laughs> no, but. Symbolic. Just <laughs> century. Because I want to do this first before I want it by refresh you. <laughs> Let's get serious before we get funny. You want a sweet? Do. <sighs> Take a sweet. You head back to the ship. Thank you. Go down into your quarters. Uh-huh. And then what happens? Have a look Nova. around. I can't Have a look believe around. That. Yeah, no one's on the ship. The ship's empty. Okay. Oh. <sighs> Can I take a crystal out of my pocket? Yep. H- Hello, ILS. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you, yeah, you just ILS and then you like, because th- you know you have to kind of like throw it into the ground air or something. Yeah, yeah? so you speak the command word, um, the ILS kind of hums, vibrates, glows, and then springs out of your hand and whoosh, this illusion of Callus Starbane appears. Nova Vigia, we meet again. How have you been? I, I, is there anything I can call you? ILS is a bit. I am an I, I am the ILS. That is all I am. Um, God, you can't just call you Ian or something. I don't know. I just, that would not. Ills, no. Mm. Ails, no. I would prefer simply ILS. ILS. Okay, there we go. Um, so last time we um, spoke. By the way, keep yes. your voice down, please. I am aware of where we are. Oh, you are. You've That's been the carrying thing. with me with you. You can do that. Can you listen when you're in your little crystal? I am aware of my surroundings. Okay, so you know where we are. So, what's your opinion on Dragonborn? Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, Nova Vija. Yeah, <laughs> That's my name. You know the story of the Dragonborn. Mm. They... The Dragonborn were once great allies of Callus, the Emperor. Of me, I suppose. They joined us in the fight against Hadar. They knew what was at stake. They know that the power Hadar wields. Many of their kind gladly supported the Emperor. They fought for him. They helped him devise strategies, build new weapons, conquer planets. And then some of them, well, cowardice is not in their nature, but they began to doubt what the others believed. And rather than trying to change it, rather than trying to take back command from their own people that embraced perhaps their more base desires, they decided to rebel, to flee, to leave their home world behind and escape to somewhere they thought they would be safe, under Siaska's wings. The dragons are, well, the ones that served me were ambitious, greedy even, power hungry. Callus would never necessarily tell them how to conquer a planet. He would simply give them a planet that needed to be persuaded to join the empire. How they accomplished that was up to them. And the dragons, where they rain down fire, where they scorched earth, starved out the people until they had no choice. Many of them took prisoners to experiment on, to torture, to gain information. Some of them thought that it was better for them to die in flames than become part of, well, Adar's minions. So I ask you, What do you think of any race that would rather flee and betray their own kind than try and change it? I don't really have an answer for you, to be honest. That's because there is not an easy one. I can only say that I'm trying my best to figure out what to do now with Callus on one side and Hadar on the other. Mm -hmm. I sort of think that we're all focused on Starbane when Hadar's the problem, right? You are correct. Because yes. say we do get rid of Starbane, that would... still leaves us with Hadar. Oh, oh, my dear child, it was much worse than that. Callus is the shield between your world and Hadar. What do you think has kept Hadar at bay for so long? 
Well, Callus conquers planets, yes. But he does so so that his empire can hold back the tide of Hadar's crawling hands. Why Aroas? Why does Callus care so much about Aroas? I'm afraid that I still cannot tell you that. You can't find information yet. Indeed. But everyone here thinks that it's Siaska's cradle that's shielding, shielding Aroas. Siaska's cradle hides Aroas, yes. It protects it, makes it so it does not, uh, it's difficult to find through planar magic. Ships cannot pass through it. So in an extent, it does help. But do you think the cradle will last forever? Nothing lasts forever. Indeed. I have two more questions. Um, I don't you know may ask them, of course. I don't know how much time we have left. Before, as much time as you need. You mentioned titans. Yes. That the gods aren't gods, they're titans. Yes. What's a titan? Ah, you are clever. You are clever to pick up on these things. You would serve Callus very well. I would be very pleased to work alongside you. I can see you commanding a ship. Yeah, I don't think that's for me. Oh, I think it is very for you. You are clever enough to work the functions on the Aegis V. I do not see why you could not command a, a warship. Not very Still. good at leading. Get very flustered. Yeah, that can be taught. Still, your question. The Titans, Titans are creations. They are echoes or fragments of a god. Think of them as vestiges. When Siaska created her Titans, she broke off pieces of herself Elements that would become the foundations for an idea. The sky, magic, the storm, the earth. The idea of the forge or the idea of a song. And from those fragments grew beings, powerful beings. Of that there is no doubt. But mortal beings, technically. Mortal? Oh, yes. So they can be slain. So you're saying... Hesper and Velena, they can be killed? Of course. Of course. But they're still technically children of Siaska, right? Uh, it is difficult to say. If I were to, if you were to sever a finger, plant it in the ground and say a tree sprouted from it, is the tree your child? It is you, yes, but it is not its own being. He's just a part of you that has grown. Is Callus a god? Hmm. No. No. He was a mortal man. Perhaps now he is more than that. Perhaps now he is a symbol. He has attained great power and knowledge. But uh, he is a man. He has found the secrets to extending his life. But he is a man. The only true god that Callus ever knew was Siaska. Hmm. So, my last question is a bit of a theoretical one. Oh, please, my favorite type of question. If I was to say I want to join Starbane, yes. what would you tell me to do next? You Bearing that I am I on my own, to. surrounded by people who really hate him. Mm. Mm. We have a compact, you and I. At any time, I could activate myself when you don't want me to. Wait, what? Yeah. I could give away that you've been carrying me this whole time. Oh, please don't. Not here. Because you know they would destroy you, right? Of course. Of course I know. But it means that you and I are now partners of a sort. <laughs> you keep my secrets and I shall keep yours. Do we have an agreement? Sure. I cannot communicate with Callus directly. If you wish to contact him, you will need to find... You will either need to try and predict where he will be, of which I can try and help you, or you will need to find a way to communicate with him, magically or physically, I'm not sure. Perhaps find an ally that already has communication with Callus. The one that was commanding the Aegis V, Sansara, has such communication. She disappeared, though. I have no idea where she went. She will return. 
Callus will not. She is a useful asset, especially in his plans for Erois. <clears throat> she will return somewhere. Is he on Erois now? I could not tell you. I am just an illusion. I have his memories, his mind, his knowledge, but no magical connection to him. I am a ghost, an echo of what he was. You've got to give me something to trust you, right? I have already told you. I cannot communicate with him directly. Of that, you do not need to fear me providing him intel. Where would you predict he'd be right now? I will need more information to theorize. When we have moments of peace like this, tell me what you know he has done already, more of his plans. I know a little, but the more information I have, the better an estimation I can make. What I would tell you is that it is likely he is trying to, well, I suspect he is trying to find a way to remove the cradle so that his empire can come to Erois. He can bring his full might to bear. Makes sense. If I have a piece of advice for you, Nova Vija. <laughs> yeah. The gods, they are single-minded. You're these titans. They are nothing more than the development of an idea. What they say is determined by what they are. They cannot think like you can. And the dragons don't trust them. Collapses the eyeless. I'm just going to hold it in my hand and just be like, and don't pop out while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The rest of you making your way, uh, looking for uh, a, a lovely store or shop. Um, okay. <laughs> quill. <Yeah. laughs> quill, quill, quill. Uh-oh. Nobody else would notice this. Whether it's the power of the eye or just your naturally honed senses from years training as a messenger, you're, you're the only one who senses this coming. Walking down a large, wide boulevard, stores, you can see groups of tieflings, merchants, you can see dragonborns on either side selling wares or working on crafts. Um, everybody seems happy. There are no patrols, it's just you in the street in the busy town um, as you're making your way through. You see a few dwarves. And then you feel a tremor beneath your feet. And you begin to see spherical shapes in the ground itself something changes as the stone just turns to dust. And these great wide pits begin opening up in the city streets itself. There is a kind of commotion. One of the dwarfs falls in. There is a cry of pain or anguish um, as people start like looking around. You see several of the dragonborn, um, they kind of snap almost into a military training instinct as they reach for weapons. And coming, not pouring, but you see shapes beginning to emerge. A tall, dark gray, like 17 foot tall figure kind of pulls himself free and lifts up three humanoid women dressed in dark red and black the symbol of Zarkira tattooed on their open bare chests oh, as he deposits them on the ground, slithering up the creature's leg and up onto the stone itself. Two, at first you think they're two more women, but they have snake-like uh, appendage bodies as they slither up onto the surface of the stands. You can hear, Quill, with your perception in the distance, more of these kind of events taking place elsewhere in the city. Right. Um, as these creatures rise up, you see the dwarf, this dwarf man that had fallen into the hole. Um, one of the serpent women is like literally holding him like in a, in a, like a grip and just <laughs> bites into his neck and Whoa. just <laughs> and then throws the body Whoa. to the ground. <laughs> Roll initiative. Oh my god! <sighs> Uh, Nova, you are not there yet. Should I roll? Yes. This is you're going to come in. We will imagine that your conversation was taking place as okay. these guys were making their way there, okay. and then you're going to okay. kind of come in a bit late. Now my refresher <laughs> broke. I rolled natural one. So, what are we at? Um, so there's 
two sneak people. Give me a second and I will do you a recap a as I write down a lot of initiatives. And three regular. Cultists. Did we take a long rest when I was gone? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. You had like a week on the ship, God, so. Yeah, I know. He's mortal and squishy. Yeah, <coughs> I'm mortal and squishy too. I'm as god as god. I'm probably not going to finish this combat, but... I took damage from Nova's hand. What if god I did. I did, so... Oh, yeah. Yep. Shit. Right, I've got a lot of initiatives to roll, so I'm sorry. Whoop. It's going to take me a bit of time. You could always just cut down the amount. Yeah. No, <laughs> absolutely I can't. Duh. Just trying to make things easy for you, Mark. You know? I mean, that's very kind of you, but it's okay. I don't... You roll an initiative on the cake that we're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> Need to know if cake Are you going to get the cake? Oh, I want the cake. Was, was the <laughs> cake there the ever cake. there? <laughs> is there cake? Yeah. Just Taylor. say it. Uh, 21. <laughs> oh, there 21. Is no cake. It's a lie. You have like a plus four decks, don't you? And I had a vanish because. Oh, uh, nine. Nine? nine? Yeah. Nova. Four. Lucius. 18. Uh, Sentry. I wrote Nova twice. 11? Yep. Okay, what's your... D Actually, no, they're going to go first. I just want you to know that Kim wrote you a note, I wrote a note as well. It just said, I love you, XO. You don't get that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wrote, because I'm making you have a fight I, in d and I wrote him one because he was going to give you a note and it just says, you massive kiss ass, because I knew. <laughs> <laughs> you were going to give it to Tom as uh, you gave it to you me. Go. Well, Not a kiss Ayla, ass anymore. Um, <laughs> Hi. I would say probably what actually happens <clears throat> is like the surprise of these guys appearing means that until they're basically in their own battle formations, you guys suddenly realize what's going on. Quill, you kind of see what's happening. Um, the, as they scatter, you see that basically, imagine you have like a long street, you have shops and, and little kind of buildings on either side. There are two large sinkholes in the middle of the, the street itself, um, probably about sort of like 10 feet, 15 feet wide. Uh -huh. um, in one of the holes is this a stone giant. I'm not going to like beat around the bush. It is a 16 foot tall, very quite gaunt, grey skinned, bald of head, wielding a massive stone hammer. And he kind of like raises his hand up as he emerges and deposits three human women. Um, they have two knives in their hand. Their hair is slick with like a green coloration. Um, and they have these bloodshot eyes. They look gaunt and they're just they're jittering, they can't stop moving, they're just like, ha! Ah! And they just look crazed. Right. And then you have two serpentine women. Coffee. One has a longbow, one has like a long glaive, um, and they're barking orders at these, uh, at these other women and the giant. The women just, the, the kind of three humanoid women, just look like they're about to pounce on whoever is nearby, which at this point is a pair of dragonborn leather workers um, who are in their shop. You can see the dragonborn <clears throat> workers are like reaching for weapons. Um, and I can I can hear yeah. This. So that's the setting. So I can hear and this is going on stone yes. giants all over the place. Yes, they, well you can hear the sound of like battle yeah. happening. Place Ayla, however, is the first to go. Hi. Hi. Um, so we'll probably do like a couple of rounds and then that'll be. Yeah. Can I um, bonus action rage? Yeah. And I want to go for the three that are going to attack the dragonborn. So you charge into the middle of like the three, <clears throat> these three crazed women. Sure. I want to, yeah. Sure. Hit them. Yeah, go please. for it. Oh, well, none of those will hit because that was shit. Well, you never know. <laughs> <clears throat> so good start, good start. We'll take against the three just regular human. Yes. Things. Yeah. 14 to hit is my highest. Uh, yeah, 13, uh, 14 will hit. Okay. That was your highest. What were the other ones? The other one was a 10. Uh, the 10 is going to miss. So. Da, 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 da. Nope. So. <clears throat> I haven't looked at my spells in so long. 11 oh. damage with the hammer and a dex save. So 11. We'll put this one on, on the A, cultist A. Dex save is a 22. Okay, well, I rolled a six, so three lightning damage. Three lightning damage. Oops. More than one. Okay. It's more than one, I rolled four. So you see the first one, you swing, and she just ducks under it with lightning agility, just whoosh, as this hammer whips over her head. However, as you strike, you hit another one in the side, and you're pretty sure you hear, like, ribs crack, 
Ooh. but she just kind of like snaps to the side and almost jumps with the momentum so it doesn't quite get the full mm. hit. And she stops and this woman's eyes just whoosh, snap directly onto you. And you can see like bits of like blood just kind of trickling out of her mouth. Like she's obviously been mm. badly hurt. And then she's just like, you'll do. <laughs> and almost as the blood begins to pour down her face, you see her veins beginning to softly glow. Ew. Cool. Oh. They can oh. fuck me up now. Uh, is that you, you done? Oh. Yep. Okay. The stone giant uh, <laughs> pulls away. itself free and kind of like nice. looks around, seeing the kind of carnage of the scene. Um, it can see the dwarf that's been thrown to the side and several of the other citizens uh, running away. But it doesn't, it's not going to target any of you, I don't think. Uh, it picks up like a big loose piece of rock uh, from the area around it and like looks around and spies like one of the Dragonborn guards like patrolling and is like pointing down <clears throat> and throws this rock as it just collides, swims through the air, smacks this Dragonborn and literally cr breaks him in half as the rock just goes flying, sailing past. Um, and then he turns around and is like, by the dream, who should I be killing? little naga and the nagas look around and point to the all of you and it's like nice. very well uh what's the giants go Where so then we go it? to lucius oh, actually what's your dex modifier lucius it is um plus two i believe okay so it's that not you the three cultists uh one of them I think two of them are going to engage Ayla, and then one of them, which was just outside of your reach, is going <clears> to <throat> dash off towards the dragon one. Uh, the two turning you, the blood, the one that you hit, just s flurries with like three strikes with these knives, just um, swinging. She does swing very recklessly. Interesting. <laughs> hmm. So the first one is a twenty to hit. Yep. The second one is a natural twenty, so twenty-five ah. to hit. Ouch. The third oh. one is only a 13 to hit. No. Right, so the first one. Great, and that 20. Yep. So the first one you're going to take eight points of uh, slashing damage. Slashing, so it's half. So it's half to four. And then the natural 20 is going to be max dice plus Ross dice again. Eight, 11, 15. 15, so half to seven. Okay. So, so these. And you can see that whatever damage you did is fueling this woman's strength. As she strikes you, like the more bloodied she is, the more damage she seems to be doing to you. Um, the other one uh, that also attacked you is also going to attack recklessly. That's only a seven for the first attack. Seventeen. Just. Okay, so one hits. And then the last one, that was really bad. That's another thirteen. So only one hits you. Uh, this one only does four points of damage. So um, she's been uninjured, so she kind of like plunges a dagger in as you're trying to fend off all these strikes from these other creatures. Lucius. Oh, and the other one, by the way, gets to the Dragonborn. Let's see how much like damage she does. That's a lot of numbers you're rolling. Well, she has advantage on every attack. Oh, right. three attacks. Um, you watch as she carves into one of the Dragonborn, putting one on the ground, and then she whips around on the other one who blocks the strike and manages to kind of like slap her back and kind of cut her across the face. Um, but one of the Dragonborn is now down on the ground bleeding as she kind of like strikes into it. Lucius. Can I cast Lucius's Luscious Light on the <laughs> stone giant? Okay, so the big, yeah, but like do you put it up in the air? foot sphere, so it will encapsulate him. Okay, to yep, pretty much, yeah. Seven foot, and also is there anyone near him that will also be in it? Uh, the two Naga came out of the other hole light, so no, I think it's just the giant, because he's so big. So big. it's blinded. Okay. it's in this sphere. Yep. And anyone that starts in it takes 2d6 cold damage. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you kind of hear this like, I the dream. I just so bright, I cannot see. Also, at the end of their turn, they do a dex save or do 2d6. Yes. At the end of their turn. Okay, so just remember that on, on his turn at the start and then at the end of his the Giants go. So you summon this spell. Uh, do you want to do anything else? That's about it. Okay. So we have anything... Uh, <laughs> so, right, we've got so many tight initiatives. Uh, the Naga with the Glaive sees you cast this spell. It's like, ah, spellcaster. And you see her body kind of like pull up and she just slithers down the street, kind of like this angular kind of like, sp and very quick, very, very fast movement. 
um, as she just slides her way to you, bringing this giant glaive to bear. But the first thing she tries to do is she tries to wrap her body around you, this like snake-like mm -hmm. body. She tries to constrict you with her body. Again. <laughs> uh, 22. Uh, yeah. Okay. That might hit. That might hit. So that is going to be for seven points of bludgeoning damage, but you are grappled. Uh, can you make a concentration check for me, please? Huh. 11. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that would be fine. DC 10. Uh, so you maintain c uh, concentration on the luscious light, um, but she wraps you up with her body and she <laughs> kind of squeezes tightly. <laughs> Uh, not again. <laughs> then she's going to try and bite. Now that you are you are currently restrained and grappled, um, and she's going to try and bite you with advantage because you are restrained. For a twenty-one. Yeah. So you take seven points of pierce, piercing, piercing, and damage. then yeah. only two points of poison damage. As she kind of like bites into your neck, and you feel this like burning poison. Seven piercing, two points. Oh. Have an elemental adept as an acid. Oh, so, which okay. means I ignore resistance to it. Uh, so as I cast ignore. That's when. when I, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's for them. Yeah. Never mind. So you know in the future, and it's also acid, this is poison. It's a different type of damage. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's her go as she kind of slides forward. Sentry. Okay, I'm going to uh, use my flame lance on the giant. Okay. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Let me get it up. Hello, friend. Uh, DC 13 save throw. I'll give him disadvantage as he is blinded and therefore doesn't see it. That's a natural one on the disadvantage. No, he fails. A 3d10 fire damage. There's this burning lance of flame. Whoop. 11. <clears throat> so is that a 9? That's a 9. 6, 9, 14, 20 damage. 20 fire damage. And then I have to take nice. some. Nice. Nice. The flame! Do, 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 do. And damage that for me. That's a three. Okay. For me. Nice. Do you want to move? That was your action. Let's see. Where where am I in like? So I imagine that you guys are all kind of clumped together. So Lucius is kind of nearby, like within five feet of you, kind of thing, or like within cool. ten feet, I'd say at least. Mm -hmm. Um, everybody except Ayla is clustered around you guys, right? Okay. Ayla has rushed off about 30, 40 feet and is engaging the three cultist women. The giant is about. 45 feet away from you guys in a big pit mm -hmm. um, in the middle of the road. And you've just got like a clean kind of open plaza. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I uh, make an attack on the Naga lady? So your action was to use your flame lance or is yeah. that a bonus action? Uh, that is... I think it's an action as well. I don't know. It yeah, it's in your action. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be an action to do. Um, so no, you can't do that, but you could move up to her uh, properly so that yeah. you threaten them. Yeah, I'll move up to them. Okay, so you kind of like get into a battle position against the Naga that's currently constricting Lucius. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Um, Quill. Um, could I do a um, Beacon of Hope um, to everyone, not them? And that's every civilian as well. Okay, can you, is it just like as many creatures as you want? Choose any number of creatures within sure. range. Within, What's the range? Oh, range. 30 feet. So that will hit everybody except Ayla. Motherfucker! Okay. And Do a everyone. couple of the civilians, yeah. Dude, that's the range of the spell. What do you want from me? Someone to not run out of the range of my beacon of hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sorry I'm doing things. And then... You could move slightly. That's your action. You could, I, you could move you could 15 move, foot forward. And then I'd be in your radius. Yeah, I don't want to go forward, so you know. <laughs> uh, good, old, you. good old backline you fighters could've... doing nothing. I'm just thinking ah. a tiny projectile blew my beak off. This guy is throwing rocks yeah. and boulders. Yeah. He's that's blinded. gonna. I'm going to be smushed. He's blind, though. Uh, and then I. that's an action, so I can't... Uh, okay. Well, no beacon right. for me, then. So that's you done? Yeah. Um, um, so... uh, everyone will receive full healing from me. Oh, thank you, Shun. Thank you. Uh, for so as, as you cast that, Nova, you're on your way to them. You're, you're blissfully unaware yeah. for now. Well, not blissfully. I'm probably troubled. Troubled. A little troubled war. Um, yeah, but so she the last person probably to go in, seen it. She's probably seen she it. She will do in a minute. Oh, like, when we start next week, she'll see. Um, before we wrap up today, the last thing is the last Naga, this one with a long bow, sees you cast this like radiant oh, energy. Oh, God. Ah, the priest. Oh. <laughs> and looses an arrow. These yeah, guys are no, intelligent, they, they know how to fight. I mean, I'm going to portent that for an eight. 
Okay, eight, so that becomes a 13. Doesn't hit. Doesn't hit. Okay, sec <laughs> sec <laughs> second, He's like, second yeah. attack. Nice. Oh! Oh, dear. Port in that one. I can't have that one's a 14, that will Do you hit. want to port in that? No. No, I, it will hit me. So that becomes a uh, 16 to hit. Damn it! Just a does that point. actually hit? Yes. It does. Thwonk. So, damageio. Can you make a constitution saving throw for me, please? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, I will. I won't port in that one. Uh, probably should have. <laughs> constitution 10. Okay, so the arrow does eight points of piercing damage to you. Thunk! Ugh, kind of oh, slams yeah. into your side. Blows my beak off. And you feel this kind of liquid kind of pour over you and just kind of sap some of like, I know, some like the magical essence out of the air or something around you. Uh, you receive only half any restored hit points until the end of your next turn. I receive. You, so if you heal yourself, you only get half the healing back. Until hmm. the end of his next turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or for, that's healing from any source. I guess any that's healing even is after hard. Beacon of Hope. Basically, half your healing. So yes, yeah, so if, right. if Beacon of Hope maximizes it, you get half of that. Uh, that's all right. So also, concentration same, uh, check, please. Oh, for my, yeah. Beacon of Hope. Why do you use that one? <laughs> is it a one? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it was like a four. <laughs> <laughs> so, Beacon of Hope. For <laughs> sake. Every time I cast that, <laughs> I have to get rid of it somehow. Well, Where did it go? Just put it in the bed. <laughs> it just, he he yeeted that away. Right. Um, <laughs> and with that, that brings us to the end of the round. I think the last thing we see is Nova, you're kind of deep in thoughts. Um, and you can feel the kind of pulsing vibration of the ILS in your pocket, almost like, I am still here. And that's when you basically hear this kind of sudden tremor and rumbling. Um, and in the distance, you begin to see this large gray skinned form, like, poof, just yeet a boulder and just. Yeet <laughs> a boulder. Yeah. Don't do that. Stop <laughs> saying Don't do that. that. But it's such a good term. Because <laughs> yeet is power. And Kobe is accuracy. So, like, when, when I say he yeets a boulder, you can really kind of feel like the, <laughs> the power. Mm. Yeah. And you know it's you going to be affecting us because we are directly equidistant of uh, Tavern and Cake. You know, wherever there's trouble, we're there, right? I'm guessing it's where the big giant <laughs> well, is. Also, right? But you, you see that this is happening in multiple places around the city. Oh. Yeah, you can see that this is some sort of coordinated attack. Oh. Jeez. Is it within that, 120 feet of me? Uh, the giant? Yeah. Um, no. Okay. You're seeing this kind of in the far distance. Sure. Why were you going to try an Eldritch Blast? I was going to yeet a bolt at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, not today. Uh, so that's it for this week. Uh, we leave. I've got some notes down of like stuff that's going on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, man. Now my piece of paper back. That really went. I'm going to remember that I have advantage on shitface McGee. Oh, all of, yeah. You have advantage on attacks against all of them. So does anybody. Shitface McGee. The yes. cultist. All oh, right. Uh, that one. Also, next week, I will make sure we have a battle map. It's just that I was rushed this week, um, so I can nice. make a battle map. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but next week, we'll have a battle map for this encounter, because I have cool minis Yay. for it. Yay! Um, Big ones. Oh, well, yeah. I'm, I'm using my bloody Warhammer ones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, nice. Cool. All right, let's read some donations uh, before we wrap things up. So Nightjar, again, by the way, due to Frank the NPC's typo, a failed brookstone is now known as a borkstone. Ah! There you go, so a failed brookstone like is a borkstone. I don't know how often we're going to see a failed bork, uh, brookstone, though. Maybe. Daft Day 41. Oh, wow. Even a bit of a cliffhanger at the break. Roller coaster of emotion so far and plenty of time left. Thank you very much, Daft Dave. That Norwegian guy, Sentry. Check your right hand. There you'll find a green eye shape. Activate it and update your NVIDIA drivers. Oh. <laughs> there it is. There, there it is. is. Oh. Yeah, oh, oh, half hundo from Wow. Oh. Oh. I don't Ooh. usually leave a message, but I just had to say that the past few episodes have been phenomenal. Oh. Thank you, Thank Paris. You. Met Manu with a quarter hundo donation. Thank Ooh. you, Manu, as always. Zafir. I can't watch live today, but I still wanted to drop in and leave a dono. Super pumped because at the moment I'm working on something new based on your Super Tense events, episodes of 50. It's Ooh. called Six Seconds More. I can't wait to share it with oh, all nice. of you. Oh, very cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> Lightning Wing Dragon, A Plumbus, world renowned author of Eroris, recipient of five insert name here prizes. Um, <laughs> Siaska Literary uh, Prize. Yeah. Uh, Ace of Thorns, stupid, Ooh. not sexy internet fell over mid century reaction. So that sucks and feels out of the session. Rhiannon still knocks it out of the park every time, though, so not much harm done. Thank you very much, Ace. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, Norfurv with a half hundo. Thank Whoa. you very much. You. I watched the first episode of Aroris, loved it, so I went and watched the entirety of the Lightfall campaign. Love your new characters so much, especially Sentry. Mark, you're a great storyteller. Makes my six hour drives to visit family enjoyable. Oh, wow. Thanks. Well, Damn. Wow. Big old drive. No, thank, thank you. And then Lightning Wing Dragon again. If you want my thoughts regarding Nova's injury, I was kind of wondering would Eldritch Blast be affected from force damage to Necrotic? No. Ooh. Because oh. it comes from Tiangong, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it would go so, around yeah. Tiangong. But that doesn't oh, cool. mean to say that maybe you can't use Touch the hands someone. to do some damage. Well, we have a new stat, so I don't know. Oh, that's true. I do. Uh, you need to remind me because I, I yeah. forgot to write those out. I'll send you lots of texts. Yes. Uh, cool. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Oh, we'll yeah. We'll be PM. back next week. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Katie's birthday on yeah, Wednesday, when? so we'll do a birthday uh, episode next week. It's not actual cake. We'll yeah. see you then. Actual cake. Actual cake. Actual cake. Yeah! Yeah! Bye! 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 Bye!